Ray, I'm drinking a fancy bottled water. Do you know why that is? You're a fancy lad? Yes. In addition to this, though, it's because the water coming out of my pipes is brown. Oh. Yeah. But it's not fancy. No. Okay. It, no, it's would the... you drink it if it was fancy brown water? No. Well, is it the shit that Augustus Gloomp drowned in? Augustus? That's what it looks like. Oh, uh, maybe. What happened to him? He gave he gave in to his German lust for chocolate and uh-huh. fell. It's I, it, it's very possible he saw his own reflection like a uh, narcissus and uh, <laughs> sort of um, thought yeah. it was a chocolate angel and he tried to eat it. You don't mean Lex Luger, but the original <laughs> figure no. of narcissus. Yes, Luger. right. Okay, just uh, to check in. Yeah, uh, yeah, that old boy. Yeah. Well, then I guess no. You probably don't want any brown water. In the end, no, no, no. I I went. To, I saw that it was brown. I did a double take. <laughs> what happened was I thought time was flowing backwards. You thought you were inside because town. Uh, no. <laughs> I went to like I finished my coffee and I went to wash out the uh, the coffee. Yeah, thing, and that's also brown. Water. Thing I, exactly. So like typically I pour water in that and then it cleans out the remaining grounds and right. brown water comes out. This time brown water was going into it from the tap and I'm like. <laughs> This isn't the sequence of events. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong here. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure this isn't yeah, how so they I do did... it at Starbucks. No. So I did, I went downstairs. At, there's a vending machine outside our building. I just got a thing of water. Now I'm, I'm drinking that. I think it's fine. I, I tested a couple minutes ago before we started, and it seems to be coming out clear. But just gross. I mean, it's not like you've been gone for three months and... <laughs> You know, had the right. pipes gum up or something. Also gross, yeah. yeah. No, but I, there were there were water dudes outside working. Uh, oh, so okay. I, yeah. I, yeah. So I think I think they know there's a problem. Yeah, that reminds me of when I was uh, back in my bachelor pad and oh. uh, just taking a shower one day. And I guess somebody was over at the apartment to do some stuff and they just shut off the water. It was um, like no warning. I get it was the middle of the day. Were you all soapy? And, well, it was the middle of the day and no one would expect that I was unemployed, but I was and alone oh, and using the bathroom boy. when I suddenly didn't have water. And then I um oh. I had to well, let's see. Was my hair shampooed yet or not? I don't remember, but either way, I <laughs> let's go to the tape. Um, mm. I'm not done. What are you looking at? I traipsed, not knowing what was going on and not knowing how long this would last, I traipsed over to Safeway and bought like two jugs of water and then just kind of <laughs> like poured it over my head in the tub for a little bit and I sad. sad okay, you, so you waited till you got home. <laughs> well, you know, it's the Bay Area. A lot of people doing that out in the streets, but no, I, I decided right. to go home first, yeah. All right, classy. Uh, it wasn't for drinking, though. It wasn't drinking water, no. But, uh, yeah, geez. Just people messing with our water when you don't expect it. Don't mess with our water. No. Stupid. Can't you leave a note or something? Or have something planned? And a notice ready? You know what I mean? Yeah, typically there's uh, signs posted in the, well, lobby is generous uh, area of our building. <laughs> Sort of, uh, it's not really a lobby. It's more like uh, a, a small hallway that leads to a staircase and an elevator. Okay. Like usually there's a thing posted there that's like, hey, on this day we're doing uh, maintenance on something. But there was nothing, like I went down to double check even when I went to get the water. I was looking around like, did I miss a notice? Or, there was nothing there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, uh, what what brand is this water? What do you get? The fancy Oh, water. I got a Irohas. All right. Um, Japan natural water, and then in English it says natural mineral water. Mm. It's great. It tastes exactly like the classic drink. Right, sure. It you're definitely better off if it's from a natural spring source, because a lot of the stuff is just from a tap, and you don't want that. It doesn't really. Oh, you can tell. Are you asking me if I can? No, I'm saying like if it's tap water, I think it's pretty easy to tell. Oh, okay. Well, some people, some people don't. I have what we call a discerning palate. I, I, you got a discerning lots of things. <laughs> well, my palate's only discerning when it comes to water, like yeah, discerning ears, 
Eyes, I, nose, I heard, mouth. I heard that. I saw that. I smelled that. I ate that. Uh, <laughs> I I don't get uh, craft coffee. That's one of the things my palate does not get. Because I've I've no. gone out. I have a friend uh, who used to work at a craft coffee place, and I would I would hang out with them from time to time. And uh, every time they'd recommend like here's here's our fancy here's our Colombian Blorbo, and I'd be like, yeah, it's it's coffee. It's, yeah, it's exactly like. When I used to drink, it was my same approach to craft beer as well. It's like, Here's yeah, it's it. <laughs> Sorry, it sure is beer. Delayed laughter at Usain Blorbo. Here's our signature <laughs> Blorbo. <laughs> yeah. You know, craft coffee is what they call macaroni and coffee in Canada. Did you know that? I <laughs> is that true? Yeah. Okay. It's wild. <laughs> Maybe I should start having macaroni and coffee for breakfast. Yeah. Craft breakfast! And the Smarties are different? Okay. <laughs> it's No More Whoppers. Welcome to the show, everybody. Thanks very much for listening. How are you doing? My name is Ray Barnholt, the Walking Performance Improvement Plan. And with me as always, manufactured net the site, Alex Fraioli. Hi, I I am an astounding facsimile of what can occur in nature. How's it going? Cool. Does that mean you're like shiny and stuff? I I, I forget this part more, of my biology book. More or less, you're not gonna find it in any biology book, I'm oh. afraid. I exist outside the confines of uh, the education system. Is it Aorzia? No, it's uh, an FF12. That's an FF12. Damn it. No, yeah. no, you're right. I was trying to, I was racking my brain trying to think of Final Fantasy uh, minerals. I forget. Oh, right. Okay. From. You got, yeah. um, I know Mithril shows up a lot. I know that's a mm-hmm. Tolkien, but uh, Final Fantasy certainly likes to use it. Yeah. What else? That's, that's all. Okay. Oh, uh, iron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very fantasy. Magnesium. No, oh, yeah. Total fantasy bullshit. Who cares? Manganese. Who All cares? Right. Am I right? Anyway. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Uh, Pretty good, I guess. Yeah, I'm uh, just sitting here chilling. Got to get up early tomorrow, actually, to take, uh, the, oh, you. take the kid to a doctor's appointment. Okay. So right after this, I'm going sleepy by. That sounds great. You might want to tighten that up in editing. That's all I do. All right. (laughs) (laughs) I do. I cut out a tremendous amount of pauses and silences when I edit. All right. Could you do some more? I leave them in if they're funny. How about this one? (gasps) (coughs) I couldn't take it. Uh, (laughs) Sorry. Uh, All right. Yes. Well, we got a lot to talk about. I got some game talk to talk about and uh, things related to that. Uh, I got to tell you, though, if I may do some inside baseball. Do it. This is actually a momentous episode of No More Whoppers. Why is that? We decided to make a collaborative document of what we're going to talk about. That's right. For the first time. Yeah. In our 12, 13 year history? 12? Yeah, pretty much. Speaking for myself, I always had a page open in OneNote with like all the things written down that I wanted to talk about at least. And maybe suggestions for Alex and then like the outro, you know, the thing where we go through the website and the phone number and stuff. Like I wrote all that down. And then Alex decided that uh, he he wanted more of that for himself and for us. And so uh, I don't know uh, really what your goal was, I guess, just to work better. I mean, that's fine. I just thought maybe organization. Yeah. Okay. No, I get it. That's fine. I'm just saying. uh, All right. I thought maybe you had a deeper. Uh, no, it's for it's, it. It's not some. It's not some mystery. It's just hey, let's organize better. All right, air circulation, breathing it. Yes, air circulation of the brain. Get that new breathe app. Yeah, brain circulation. Remember, remember in Mystery Science Theater, every time uh, an episode would end, it would say keep circulating the brains. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's that. And the production company was called Best Tapes. Uh, you moving the cursor around the page now is very distracting. <laughs> because <laughs> every time you click on something the green thing shows up that it says ray barnholt is editing folks this is a momentous episode of no more whoppers we've stopped using the collaborative document 
<laughs> it was a wild afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> uh are you is, is anybody shocked <laughs> i think the problem is we we just can't be using it at the same time or we will drive each other more insane <laughs> all right no i'm sorry it's my fault but um hopefully we'll we'll have some good information in there you know historical things where we can look back on and maybe uh leave some urls to things we want to talk about and be like oh yeah that's right when we talked about that on that episode and i'd be like no but i'll go look at the document for it and here it is yeah so uh like i said it's a it's a bold new era for the show (laughs) right after we got done with podcast networks we figured let's actually organize ourselves yes I mean, while we're on the topic of podcasts, I'm in the planning stages of a podcast for my Patreon, which is going to be a weekly show, sort of uh, in the vein of 10 and 10, where I will play a game and uh, talk about it for 10 minutes. Uh, This will all be, of course, condensed down, so there will not be any any pauses or any of that sassafras. It's going to be like... uh, a a spiritual successor to 10 and 10, let's say. All right. That is your classic format. Yes. Oh, I also need to say this. Um, I think there's only, there's maybe like a dozen people left, but if you're still signed up for active billing to the old 14 and 14 Patreon and you don't want to be charged on May 1st, please cancel that uh, because Patreon isn't big on, what's the word, functionality? (laughs) No. And I am trying to revive my own Patreon. Um, It has been renamed to Patui, but... I didn't I did want to just start a new one, so I revived the old one. Turns out there's still people who are active when it went dark, so I reactivated it and then almost had a heart attack thinking, oh, did I just charge a bunch of people for nothing? And then it turns out, no, because you can pause billing, so I quickly paused it before the first of the month. First of April has passed. Uh, I could do it again on May, but I think it'll be ready to launch by then. By May 1st, if you're, if you're not on board, get out! And if you are on board, get in! All right. I or, really do stay like in. Patreon's trailblazing in user experience in that they hide the things you want behind three layers of page and sometimes just completely hide the button or move the button somewhere in one of these layers of pages that you now need to hunt for. It's the worst. And maybe you need to be in creator mode. Maybe you need to um, manage oh, your yeah. posts. Or are they called drafts now? No, they're posts. Are they over here? Okay, where's the schedule button? Well, first you need to write the post, and then it will save the draft, and then you can go schedule it. Great, thanks. Could you all just put it on yeah. one fucking screen? I couldn't even uh, – I couldn't figure out how to change my password the other day, and it turns out you have to be in member mode? You cannot right. do it in creator mode, so awesome. Great. And also, of the three guides I found to help me through this process of changing my password, only one of them mentioned this. Yeah. You know who else is fucked up recently in the same way? Daniel DeVito. Who? Uniqlo. Oh, really? So if you go to uniqlo.com now, it's just a full screen photo banner ad of a shirt or whatever they're selling. And you can click on women, men, kids, and baby. Uh, And it's just different ads of that vein. So if you actually want to like go down to the menu to search for things by category, you click the very obvious icon for search. Now, I don't know about you, but when I click a search icon, I expect a little field to come up and I can type something in, not the entire rest of the website. <laughs> so, oh boy, they fucked that all up. Not that's, gr- yeah, it's that's a I global mean... decision, by the way. <laughs> I went to Uniqlo America oh. in Japan. And they're all the same now. Yeah, I to backtrack quickly to Patreon, I, I just want to remind people uh, how I got my final payout with 14 and 14 because I, I realized I was done with the Patreon, didn't want to charge people for a whole nother month, so I quickly dis, uh, dis- deactivated it, realized I hadn't withdrawn my money, it was like, well, surely I can just withdraw that money regardless. It shouldn't matter if the thing is active or not. It matters. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know what it's like now, but at the time you could not withdraw money from your own Patreon if it wasn't active. And for about a day and a half, I was mm. freaking out because it was it was a, a kind of a substantial amount left in there. 
And I'm going back and forth with Patreon support. And I'm like, hey, how do I get this out? I don't know. And they're like, yeah, you got to reactivate. That's the only way to get it out. And I'm like, that's going to charge everybody. Oh, no. Like, Patreon's doing teeth sucking now. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, isn't there, is there another way? And they're like, well, what you could do is you could block, you could block all of your patrons that will remove them from being active subscribers, but then they'll also get an email saying they've been blocked. I'm like, well, I don't want to do that either. That fucking sucks too. <laughs> Jesus and I was Christ. in the middle, I was in the process of writing a very long message to all of these subscribers saying, look, I need everybody to please unsubscribe right now because I have to reactivate in order to withdraw this money. And before I was able to send it out, I tried one crazy trick just to, just to see if it would work. I was still logged into an active session on my home computer. So I was doing all this from the bar. I was still logged in on an active session on my home computer that did not oh. know that the account was deactivated. So I just navigated over to the money and withdrew all of it That's immediately. That's slick. That's the best feeling, even though it is it is from shit, but it is a good feeling. Yes, <laughs> it, it is from shit, but I, I, was, I was relieved. And Patreon, I think, is a very useful tool for creators. And uh, I think it, it helps people sort of live their dreams, so to speak. But like once the next thing comes along, I think we need to jump on that because Patreon doesn't know what the fuck yeah. it's doing. Well, the problem is there have been the next things. There have been other well, No, I mean Patreon... the next big thing that we all agree on is the replacement. Yeah. Because I know there are, like when I was <clears throat> but we didn't. looking at, <laughs> not yet, but when I, I, I can't predict the future, right? I'm just saying like if and when a, be, a better thing comes along, let's go to that one instead because right. Patreon you, sucks. Can you also predict the past? Yes, I predict you will have been born in 1983. Ooh, no, I'm afraid not. Okay. What? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Just messing with you. Yeah, because before I thought, I, before I settled on Patreon again, I was like, it's been a while since I did 14 and 14. It, it, it's been like four years or so. Let's see what else, let's see what my other options are these days. And I found a YouTube video that was like, the top 27 crowdfunding options for you. And I'm like, well, I guess I have to watch this. And they're all garbage that you've never heard of, except for Patreon and Kickstarter and GoFundMe. Yeah. Uh, and maybe a couple others. And um, only yeah, fans. I, I did consider that. Maybe not yet. Maybe we'll branch off into that. All right. Uh, but but yeah, Patreon, it, it sucks that it's just kind of the default because it's so well known. Because it's it's very poorly run. I am not doing a good job of selling my own Patreon when I tell everyone the platform sucks. But no, uh, you're just <laughs> you're, you're talking about how upset you are at using it. I am, well, that's just that's that's the baseline Alex anger I get from using any product or service. That's true. Yeah, that's right? the like, Alex so that's experience. like it's the same it's the same level of anger trying to open a bag of chips. <laughs> yes. Oh, speaking of chips. Uh, <laughs> what, um, what? Speaking of chips, I had a uh, I had a very nice uh, family from the UK come into the bar the other day, and oh, <laughs> uh, except the mom, I could I could not get any kind of just very very typical emotionless United Kingdomites. I don't know what the term is, Britons. Oh, a liter Okay, I'm trying to get I'm trying to like trying to do my bartender job, which is be you know charming and talk to people, and I I can't get any reaction out of the mom uh, when she she ordered chips. She said, "Can we have some potato chips?" And I said. You know, because I've I deal I've been dealing with non Ameros for a long time, yeah, and I said, yeah. "Hang on, hang on, hang on. Are we talking potato chips or potato crisps?" And she said, "Oh, yes, uh, crisps, of course. I just I knew you were American, <laughs> so I, I used the American term." Oh, okay, yeah. And then and then I'm trying. I thought I was very quick on my feet, but um, I res I responded with, "It's fun to speak another language on holiday, isn't it?" And got nothing. I like just, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's just absolutely no response. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> got absolutely no response. And that's when I kind of gave up and just went in the corner and looked at my phone, which is that's what I do. If, if you're giving me nothing, man, then like, oh, why are we doing this? We don't, we don't, there's no rule that says we have to talk. Yeah. What have I done? <clears throat> yeah. You know what they call a po boy in the UK? Oh, wait, wait, let me guess. Hang on. Um, Little wastrel. No, just sandwiches. Oh, oh, that's okay. Yeah, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got me. You showed me. Uh, that's right. Good night, Seattle. We love you.
Let's come up with some new Cockney rhyming slang um, for, I don't know, what's that melted melted butter garlic kind of dipping thing? They, they call it over there in Alex. Oh, yeah. Right. No, I love it. Yeah. You remember our old segment from like episode three that I did? No. Uh, that I called the names of British things? <laughs> no, what? Bring you it back. <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> no, it requires writing. <clears throat> Aw. Uh, no, no, you don't remember. We got to do more written segments. Yeah, I want to. I want to try to do more written segments well, I once do. I have more free time. You, you do all of them, really. I, I don't both, do much well, of anything anymore. Let's do more. I'm useless. Let's do more for the community. Okay, you're not useless. All right. <laughs> you were never useful. You're sometimes useful. You got lots of information. I sure do. Ask me anything. Who did the music in Wario's Woods? Uh, Jimmy Okada. Pretty good. <clears throat> All right, hit me again. All right. Um. Fuck. Hang on. What are you, me? Oh, that's you drop. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you dropped your ring. <laughs> it sounded so real. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. How many Metroids are in the game Metroid? To seven. This is eerie, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's really good. <clears throat> All right, let's not go too far. Everybody, let's look forward to Alex's next Patreon project, the Alex yes. Paoli Patreon podcast coming soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank uh, you. I, also, I, I do want to. And then. <sighs> no, that's Ray. Some people. That's not did a thing at and, all okay. what the content. Okay. I also I do want to mention all tiers will get the same perks. There's no there's no extra perks for the upper tiers. It's just hey, if you want to float me some extra bucks, that's it. Every tier gets the podcast. Every tier gets uh, access to videos early. And who doesn't want to give this guy a few bucks? Huh? <laughs> That's good. I saw you, you do can, it. You can see the, in my mind. Yeah, eye. you can see the face. <laughs> yeah. Um, that will be active. Uh, that goes live on May first. Until then, please enjoy this. I hope to have the uh, the YouTube video up on the Nomoa Patreon before then, as a little sneak peek for folks, because I'm I'm in the editing process right now. And uh, oh boy, oh boy, DaVinci Resolve is a real slow. Been slaving away on this video. It's a three hundred dollar license. Is it worth buying to use the extra GPU power? Because doesn't it uh, isn't isn't it limited to the regular? Why don't you just like pirate Adobe Premiere at that point? I don't want to use Adobe. No, I don't want to pirate things. You could try. I oh, I haven't thought of that. See how it fits you. No, I I I try not to pirate things that are currently commercially for sale. And I don't know why. I'm not really basing this on any moral code. It's just a thing I feel weird about. I don't know. Yeah, where are you? Like that morals? includes movies, games. It's like like anytime I get in a conversation with my friends about movies, it's always like I should watch this, this, and this. And I'm like, oh, is it if it's well, if it's not on Netflix or Amazon Prime, I'm not really watching. They're like, why don't you just torrent it? Like, cause I don't. I don't know. I don't do that. I'm sorry. Well, uh, yeah, no, I, I I sort of get where you're coming from. I think uh with like a first run movie, like I'm not going to pirate it anyway, because all of the pirated versions are just somebody filming a screen, but you'll still find oh God, yeah, they're people, cams. people, people we run across in life just being like, Oh yeah, I downloaded that immediately. I'm not going to see that. I'm like, you want to see it in potato quality from some yeah. guy and a rest of a theater reacting to it. <laughs> yeah. I, that's what I wonder. Like I, David I Lynch is that spinning about... in his grave. Wait, hey, whoa. Are you, do we have news? Uh, what are you telling me he just hangs out in his own grave from time to time this wow. is big fucking news <clears throat> great i uh, know he's fine yeah i don't understand downloading things that are still in theaters when you have a chance to actually see them in good quality yeah that that i don't get for a couple of bucks i think maybe that's a little bit less of a thing these days but i don't know i don't keep up I also, it's weird that, like, I also get uncomfortable when people are in the bar, like, openly talking about playing pirated Switch games on their Switch, which is yeah. silly because in my pocket, I have a hacked 3DS that's loaded with games, but they're games that are not for sale anymore digitally. You know what I mean? Like, that's I get the difference. It. Yeah, I, I, uh, I just 
don't think you need to be openly talking about it to begin with. Also that, yeah. Yes, I think that kind of shit should be treated with shame. Yeah. You know, it's almost like a, a tacit admission of like, I don't care about this industry or people who work on these games as long as I get to have fun and play the hot new video game. Right, exactly. Okay. It's just based on people's own situation. But I think also if you're an adult uh, living in Japan as a foreigner, you probably have some income and can probably <laughs> afford to get a game now and then. Uh, just as an assumption, you know, general sort of assumption based on the kind of people who are probably walking in and out of your bar. But yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, however, I had a certain coworker uh, in a certain media organization who one day was just bragging about playing, uh, I think it was the Blue Dragon DS game that he had just downloaded. And he was so weirdly cavalier about it in a way that I never expected him to be cavalier uh, about. And it was just a, a kind of awkward situation where I was just like, Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, hmm. <laughs> you know where you work, right? <laughs> oh dear. I was just like, why, why do that? Why, <laughs> why be so cavalier about it? I don't know. There's something like sacred about a commercial release that at least when it's new, that like when you Im instantly pirate something new, it, f it feels weird. Like you don't give, like even if the game is good, you're but you're announcing that you don't care if they make any more of them because you're just gonna steal this and you're not gonna support it. Yeah, but yeah, I think it depends on your situation. If you're an adult with means, then yeah, you you should you you can probably just buy a game every now and then if you really want it. Uh, but yeah, I, but I but mean, here's the flip side: is that I yeah. was I was 16 in 1999 and just got a CD burner. And started pirating Dreamcast and PS1 games like wildfire. <laughs> At the same oh, time. Oh, yeah, when you're 16, you don't care. Yeah, right. And so uh, I had that going on. I We had broadband cable installed in our house. And the installation guy had seen my little stack of CDRs. As a parting gift, uh, he left my browser on uh copycats which was a, like a web page oh. where you could download isos from and i was like okay well that's that's interesting of him to do that the actual <laughs> at&t at home guy doing that for me but uh no that's is, uh, that's just the url we used to test yeah he i, I think he was in his 20s so it was gonna come okay. up anyway but also uh i knew about that site anyway <laughs> and i i <laughs> think i uh found better sources <laughs> so i was just like okay yeah that's that's cute dude but uh yeah anyway yes of course when you're 16 you're you're you have a lot more learning to do uh but you also have yeah. no real income unless you are just being forced to go right. get a part-time job or something uh, but i i feel like like the income thing i get and i agree with but i think there's also there's a lot of people who do make a decent income who will always find a way to justify thievery as like, well, I make enough, but like, I can't afford to buy everything I want. So I might as well just pirate everything I want. Like, I mean, at some point you got to like go outside and do other things. I don't understand this. We've talked about this before, right. but this inclination for people to just stockpile terabytes of media, like for the world's biggest rainy day. Like, what are you doing this for? Like, <laughs> yes. I, I, I used to be, I'm still kind of, I'm not on board with on-demand music, but I am for movies because like when I want to watch a movie, I'll just fucking stream it from a service. Music is different. Music, I don't like music streaming services. I like to actually own the music and have it. Like that's something I might stockpile. Movies, I don't get it. Yeah, music is tricky for me, especially because like I, I hear a lot of good stuff on streaming, but I only am driven to buy things from like the one or two artists I really like and uh, occasionally just throw someone on a few bucks on Bandcamp, who also I think is pretty good, but like my, my favorite bands, right? Like those are the ones I'd spend money on, but yeah, it's still kind of tricky doing anything beyond that. Cause the convenience is just so great on streaming. It's uh, great. It's just this whole, all this shit is just so complicated. I think we're just kind of all considering and thinking about media in all of these millions of different ways than we ever have before, even 20 years ago. And it's just like, it's just, there's just oh, so yeah. much of it. 
And like everybody has their own opinion, their own argument, their own philosophy on all of it. And uh, I think you and me, at least, uh, us being friends and all, are mostly aligned on it. Um, I just think, uh, yeah, for some things, some entertainment things, you could probably spend a, you could probably, not you, Alex, but these people we're talking about, could afford, ha ha ha, to spend a, a few bucks on things I want. That's all. Like music itself is something I'm happy to pay for if it's on a platform that I have easy access to. Like, I hate that I'm still sort of tied to Apple, but if something is on iTunes, I'll just buy it because it's easy and it's instantaneous. Yeah. And if it's not, I I mean, I remember I remember before certain soundtracks were out, I would just get them from YouTube. Like when I opened the bar, I, I wanted the soundtrack from Mario Kart 8 to play in the bar because I think it's really good, but it wasn't available commercially, so I just ripped the whole thing from youtube you know yeah um and i don't even know if it is available now to buy but uh was it ever i mean nintendo soundtracks are so weird you have to go through like my nintendo to get them yeah i was about to say it's probably some shit that like you had to be you had to have ten thousand club nintendo points or some shit i think most of the time for nintendo games people are just ripping them like patching in and recording it off the game or something or Oh, Maybe even yes. hacking it and yeah, playing that's, the audio files. Yeah. That was a deal with the Mario Kart 8 uh, YouTube tracks because every once in a while there was a sound effect. <laughs> right, pretty right. Good. Yeah. But like, I, like now I, like I, what was the last soundtrack I bought? Um, I don't know. But uh, I did buy the Octopath Traveler soundtrack just because I saw it was on iTunes and I'm like, oh yeah, that's a really good soundtrack. Let's, you know, let's buy it. Right. Yeah. Um, but for me also, like, my problem is that uh, I listen to Japanese music almost exclusively. And as much as I would like to support some of them through like Bandcamp, like they're not on Bandcamp. <laughs> they don't know what Bandcamp is, for example. Yeah. Um, there are some other sites. Uh, some of my favorite stuff has been on a site called Ototoy, but like it's mostly all on streaming. And like every week I get a new selection of the new releases from japan because it's just kind of put on there with no questions asked and i appreciate it but to buy like the drm free versions is much more of a hassle for me just here sitting in america as a white guy and uh how i was introduced to japanese music basically was through mp3 web pages where you could just download albums (laughs) the week's albums as they came out just willy nilly again, just like the guy giving me the ROM link. But I mean, it was uh, the only way I could really be exposed to that, and therefore, you know, uh, open my mind to that music. And here I am, <laughs> still struggling to 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 get good access to it in a DRM way, DR, DRM free way. Oh boy, what a, what a world! I don't even know how I come across Japanese music anymore. I kind of don't. It's it's kind of fallen off my radar. Maybe that's just because I live in Japan and I'm inundated with the J-pop that, you know, commercials and record labels want you to hear all the time, which is not great. Yeah. Let me be clear. I'm not into all J-pop or anything. I'm talking, I definitely yeah. listen to some more alternative stuff, but yeah. And because of that, like, it's harder to get good access to it. Yeah, I think that the last the last like popular Japanese song I liked was from like six or seven years ago, and I don't even remember what it was. But it was just it it came at me from a YouTube ad. I'm like, oh damn, this song's really good. And then as as often happens, you check out the rest of their catalog, and it's like, so it's just just the one then, I guess. All right, <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, isn't that feeling great? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. just the one. Huh? <laughs> All right. That's Thanks, what guys. I that's what I that I get that apprehension whenever somebody shares something that I've done that I'm proud of whether it's from this podcast or if it's a YouTube video I made or if it, <laughs> yeah. like if it gets shared I'm always happy but at the same time I'm like oh no what if they realize this is the only good thing I've done and I'm a fraud. Well, then you go to jail for your fraudulent crimes. What? No. Well, that's just how it goes sometimes. Nintendo, bust me out of jail. Nintendo is doing something about it. Uh, All right. Look at these Cocoa Pebbles. (laughs) They're they're great. 
Uh, how does this guy feel about Cocoa Pebbles? Can't complain. All right. Two words. Stanley Tucci. Well. One word. Optimus. Uh, all right, Ray, what else? That has went been... in a weird direction. What? <laughs> Everything does. What else has been <laughs> happening with you? Uh, well, like I mentioned last episode, I was going to go to GDC, and so I am oh. here to report from GDC. No. <laughs> I came back. I uh, went there for a couple days um, because, like I said, also I got the cheap seats, and so I couldn't really do much. And so I went for two days. I could have went on a third day. I decided to stay home, uh, partly because my son got another ear infection and had to stay home. And Oh, jeez. I was like not home when they were taking him to the doctor and stuff. And so I just felt like, yeah, I should just, I should stick around, be a bit more responsible than waffling around San Francisco, not really doing anything. So I went there. I didn't get COVID. So that's good. Um, The first day I didn't wear a mask. And then I came home and saw on Blue Sky someone retweeted a woman saying something to the effect of, so we're really not wearing masks anymore, huh, at GDC? Is that it? And I was immediately oh. struck with the feelings of both, fuck you, but also, I'm sorry, I'm going to undo it. <laughs> and so the next day, <laughs> I brought my mask and wore my mask more on the second day. Um, <sighs> yeah, there was, a, there was a COVID surge here uh, a month or two ago, but it's like, it's no longer news because we've all decided that it doesn't matter anymore. Which, in in a sense, yeah, is good, I guess. But in the other, is like, it's still there. It's still happening. It's still yeah. dangerous to a lot of people, but okay. Like, I, I don't mask up unless I'm on public transportation or if the grocery store is crowded. Right. Um, because I spend most of my time either outside or behind a bar. Right, right. And, you know, I, I, you go to a big convention that takes up like three three blocks of the city. People running, oh. walking around, congesting the blocks of the sidewalks I'm and not, everything. Like, yeah. I'm I should not going just, to that. I should probably wear more. Oh, you, that. yeah. But, you know, then I would go upstairs into the, into the halls and go into these mostly not very populated talks and things, and I didn't feel so bad about it. But also, it was just like, yeah, <laughs> I probably should have. Probably should have worn the mask all the time. Um and so what yeah. about can you get away with just wearing like a masquerade mask like you're going to a fancy masquerade ball no i you, you sound like people back in 2020 <laughs> i gotta breathe oh no is this why can't i cover is that my something eye? people did is that no, a thing people did no, of course it's i don't know it sounds like some somebody would do like i'm technically wearing a mask <laughs> like, all right <laughs> yes. man, cool oh uh, and I think once in a blue moon, you'll st- still see someone with a face shield. Yeah, I see some of those in Japan. Yeah. Some people still hanging on to the face shields. Like, <laughs> Cool. You forget that air can also go around corners. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if, if it's a, I mean, COVID in particular, if it's a, it needs that wet delivery system, right? Isn't it? Uh, isn't That's it from right. Like WDS. Moisture? WDS. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> let's talk about your wds all right my uh god i'm trying to think of what wds stands for <laughs> like isn't that a isn't that a thing i've seen on a car before uh wheel door slots i don't know <laughs> i'm thinking of awd i'm thinking of all-wheel drive i think Church okay wheel drive wetter day saints wheel drive shaft okay wetter day saints the, it's the underwater mormons uh all right, so I, I mostly don't have much to say about GDC because of my limited experience there. I just went to a couple of panels and then just, you know, bailed uh, because no one invites me to any parties, and so I don't have much to do. Uh, not, not, not trying to f- say like feel sorry for me or anything. I don't really care that much, but it's just like uh, that's like the half. Oh, of so why sounds people like you go do GDC, and so it just doesn't happen to me. <laughs> sounds like I do. Right? I mean, it'd be nice, but in the end, I'm I'm still here. I'm alive. I'm here having a podcast with you, which is what I'd rather be doing anyway than being in some bar drinking and schmoozing. What if we gave a GDC talk together? It's hard to do. 
Um, is it? It has to have like real substance to it. Yeah, I know. I've It'd seen them. I know what they are. Yeah. How about, uh, okay, wait, I've got one. How about uh, FF11 colon the first 22 years? Well, they would usually do that if the person was like from Square Enix and had worked on FF11. Uh, okay, well, what's something I've worked on? Um, okay, how about a shitty blue bicycle the first five years? It's not even a video game, is it? Shit! Yeah, this you're right. This is hard. Yeah. <laughs> Told you. But hey. Oh, right. Game developers con. Okay, right. I get it now. Yeah. But hey, I do have some good news in that I met Mark Lentz finally, our good friend and fan, Mark. Oh, cool. Shout out to him. We finally met at a little teeny tiny play date meetup thing. And so uh, him and his uh, compatriot, uh, Kinsey, from, also from Chu High. Oh, yeah. Chu High Labs. And, yeah, she's uh, great. Yeah. Met the two of them, finally had a nice chat and everything. And so, yeah. Uh, finally met him in person. Very nice. So yeah, again, cool. shout out. Mark, of course, uh, was talking me up to other people in sort of a humorous way, I suppose. And we talked about how I was on Game Center CX and things like that. That's right. Um, you were Enoch Max? No. <laughs> no. No? Okay. Mentioned the podcast a bit and how he had made, you know, that original fan fun theme that uh, he was so oh, that's surprised right. that we stuck with for so long. <laughs> it's really good. It's so Hang on, do I have it? It's no, it's great. It's fantastic. I don't, hang on, do I have it? Freyoli audio. I don't see it. I thought I think I thought it was time for fan fun. That's where we have fun. Give us money. We'll give you something. Then you can send us stories of nerd stuff. Uh, my I married a Dreamcast. I went to school and wait. This is not the over nerds thing, but it encompasses over nerds. This is my monologue break in the song. Thanks a lot, everybody. Um, so yeah, that was like uh, my uh, first, only, and best social interaction at GDC. Cool. And uh, I'm not sure I will bother spending that much money again. <laughs> oh yeah. Because here's the thing: the cheap seats are like 250 bucks. To get anything else interesting out of it, you have to cross a one thousand dollar for threshold. <laughs> oh. And it's just impractical for someone like me who doesn't make any money so uh, oh god yeah it's kind of why i haven't been well i want to start going to bit summit maybe once the bar is closed but it's the reason i don't go to uh well one tgs but also uh eight fours pre-tgs party is because it was just it's it's one night of spending way too much to go to one party and i couldn't justify it anymore yeah. And I, it used to be really fun, but I mean, especially post alcohol, what now that social anxiety has kind of taken the wheel, which, and we'll get into this later, uh, the last thing I want to do is spend tens of thousands of yen on Shinkansen and a hotel to be in a very crowded room and not talk to right. anybody. Oh, I it's totally the get worst. that. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, you know, again, I'm like, well, nobody invites me to anything, but I'm also just here in San Jose. I can just. I can, you know, justify driving up to San Francisco for one party. <laughs> I wish, but it doesn't happen. But yeah, I, I would totally, uh, I would also be in your shoes and for sure think the same thing. Like, okay, yeah, not a hundred bucks to <laughs> take the train over to another entire oh boy. part of the country. No way. But yeah, if I could just drive for up for one evening, sure. But Bit Summit, yeah, you could do that. That would make sense, I think. I would, uh, didn't, hasn't it moved around? It, did it used to be spring and now it's, I don't know when it is anymore. I, but, uh, I, I'd yeah, like to go next to ask, year. I yeah. I don't think I can make it this year, but I'd like to make it next year. You should probably ask Mark, I guess. Uh, well, he's, yes, he's invited me uh, several times and every year I'm like, I of would course. like to, but it's, but also it's like, it's on the weekend and I can't, like, I have to work Saturday. That's my big night. I have to make rent. I have to be there. I can't, you know. Yeah. Which is one reason I'm excited to close the bars. I will no longer be financially tied to renting out this basement. All right. Yeah. Well, should we talk more about the basement or take a break? Let's, uh, we could take a basement break. All right. <laughs> All right. With us, the basement buddies. 
BRB, the B stands for basement. Which one? Up to you. Okay, we'll be back. Feeling down? Have you considered fruit? Fruit. Fruit. Mangoes. Pears. Raisins. Vitamin A. Vitamin C. The graduation song. Niacin. Niacin. Folic acid. Dave Folic acid. Bruce McCulloch acid. Strawberries. Papayas. Star fruit, moon fruit, horseshoe fruit, pits, seeds, Balam garden, fruit, fruit. Ask your doctor, no. Tell your doctor. Fruit. Folks, we're back. It's No More Whoppers. I'm Ray. That's Alex. Hey there. That's the nicest way I can put it. Is that... Shut Alex? up. Oh, hi. Hi. So, uh, basement bar? Basement bar. Right. You bar, had one of those. Cl- yeah, I still have it till November. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. Uh, it feels feels good to have finally announced on the bar's social medias that it will be closing. Not nearly enough people... Assumed it was an April Fool's thing, as I thought. Uh, <laughs> almost everybody knew that it was real. Uh huh. Yeah. Which probably because I don't really post any AFD content any year, really. I think people were more fooled by your Toriyama tribute and thought that <laughs> you were closed now. Oh no! That, yeah, that was one person on the Facebook who. Right. Well, statistically speaking, I just speaking. posted. I just <laughs> thanks. I just posted a slime glass. That just said thank you, but that was for Toriyama because he designed the slime. It's not you know. I mean, I'm closing, but not last month. Anyway, that's out in the open, which is great, and also the fact that <laughs> he's out. The uh, it's <laughs> the fact that the response has been generally positive is helping as well. I'm yeah. I'm yeah. always. I'm always sensitive to nerd entitlement and I was, I was fully expecting, I think there was only one person who was like angry about it. Like, what do you mean? You you have so many great games. (laughs) You still got to put in those arcade cabinets I asked about. Uh, I sent you the link to buy Raspberry Pi. What are you doing, man? (laughs) I, you know, I think I think everybody realizes I just don't have the patience or desire to do this anymore. I told you, just get a mister. Oh my god! I my my buddy Mike, uh, Australian Mike, brings his mister when he comes in. He's a, he's a good guy, but uh, that's the thing. Yeah, he brings it and he uses it, and he doesn't try to convince me to buy one. The one good guy with a mister. Congratulations! He's the one. He's the guy. He's the yeah, guy. Not even me. 
I'm a piece of shit. I well, confirmed. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Remember when you drove over? My, remember when you drove over my dad? <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty mean. <laughs> Just the delivery of that. <laughs> So yeah, remember that? Remember when you drove over my dad? <laughs> you thought I'd forget, didn't you? Uh, I didn't forget. It turns out that's a very unforgettable event. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You've got a friend in me. Uh, Theoretically, I'm your friend. Uh, uh, so it's nice. It's nice to, you know, tell everybody. Uh, also, but, but like... I did, like somebody even replied somebody replied to the Facebook thing like not knowing if it was real or not and I'm I'm not replying to those the only one I did reply to is somebody who specifically like private messaged the bar account saying hey is that real because like if somebody's making travel plans based on whether or not this thing is going to be around I should probably tell them straight up like oh yes it will or no it won't right right but somebody you know I'd l- I want people to savor the mystery <laughs> Okay. I also don't want to deal with humongous crowds in late October. Like, I don't want to deal with everybody coming to visit the bar for the last time all at once, because that will drive me insane. Oh, sure, sure. It, well, it's why the the actual last day of the bar is a secret. The last public day is November 1st. I see. Well, does that, do you think that'd make a difference? Uh, would be, yes, yeah, because the last day is going to be a private party just for people that I like. Yeah, but you still might get a crowd, and so I... and who live in Nagoya. Well, yeah, right. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, get there by November first. I'm sure November first is going to be crowded. Fine, whatever. It's going to be the last crowded night. But I, there are, I guess, there are just people that like I don't want visiting, and I'm glad they <laughs> yes. moved away. And if I, I, I promise you. I promise you, if you're listening to this, you're not one of these people. Like, these are not Nomo listeners. These are people who happened to happened to live in Nagoya and discovered the bar and thought it was great, um, yeah. but are also obnoxious fucksticks that I don't... Oh, oh, and most of which with questionable politics. Like, that's a big part of it. <laughs> um, turns out, you know, gamers aren't always great people. Right. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, just... Not looking forward to that, but looking forward to hanging it up, and we'll talk more about it as time goes on, but uh, yeah. I can't wait until you close the bar and all those people can be named and shamed, finally. Oh, man. Oh. And their addresses. <laughs> no? Okay. Yes. <laughs> One dude, I'm, I'm not going to publicly name and shame, but uh, I know he's he works in translation and localization, and... Uh, Oh boy, I've I've what's the opposite of a um uh reference? <laughs> <laughs> a vague intonation. I want to be contacted to give this guy a negative reference if any of our uh, oh. localization pals ever cross paths with. Him. Oh, I see. um no. No, this is but th- this is like for some perspective, <laughs> this is a guy who like s- has previously said that he hates localization. He doesn't understand it. He thinks <sighs> his job is just translation. He's one of those guys. He kind of doesn't understand that, like, you can't just, like, literally train. It's, it's you know, the, the kind of chuds that are pissed off that uh, Unicorn Overlord has flair to it. Right. So, basically, jealous. He's one of those. He's one of, like, I don't understand the words, therefore you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> jealous. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to say one way or another, but does he work for, has he worked on prominent titles? Yes. Okay. Well, that's the shame. Yes. Um, yeah, a big most I think it's mostly Anyway, that's enough of that. This is connected to my trip to the Brain Shaman. I finally went and I got myself um an appointment at is that a the Japanese term? To, yes. All right. Went went to find out what's what's hopping with monogam, as they say. What's up with you? And um <laughs> yes. Oh wait, don't we have, we have a theme for this, right? What's your problem? No, that's for uh, disagreements between you and me. Damn it! Yeah. All right, fine. Well, I'll come up with my own theme here. Peace in the morning, peace in the evening, peace at the first time. All right. What's my problem? What's my problem? <laughs> What's your pizza? Oh, Alex, wait. Before you go any farther. Yeah. You asked what the opposite of a reference was. 
And I yes. think the musical world has told us it is a discouraging word. <gasps> a discouraging word, yeah, right? or a diss for short, but you yeah. could also say discouraging word track if you're writing uh, an angry song about someone. Seldom heard, except in the case of that guy you're talking about. Anyway. Yeah. Wait, what's hang on? I know what that's from. Oh, uh, Home on the Range? Yes. All right. <laughs> All right, cool. Anyway, brain shaman. What's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, that's what we went to find out. I refer to myself in the plural now. <laughs> right. Well, that's fine. The royal we. That's right. I went in with what I thought were just symptoms of something that may have been undiagnosed because I've I've realized, especially lately, especially since I quit drinking, I have been extremely sensitive to loud noises and it's getting very bad. Like I will jump when my wife sneezes uh, and be just visibly upset. Uh, and I'm getting tired of it. I don't blame you or her. <laughs> I'm sure she's tired <laughs> of it too. Oh yeah. Oh, she is. Yeah. And I, I made a list of all the things that I do that I don't think are normal. And I, I ran these by wow, the doc and, and, she said a lot of these are symptoms of either ADHD or uh, ASD. And there is a lot, there's some crossover with them, but it's not really enough to be labeled as either one. She also pointed out that like, like in her professional opinion, I'm not on the spectrum in any way. And even if she suspected I were, the English language test uh, that I would take locally costs $250,000. So that's cool. What? Excuse me. 250,000 yen. Okay. <laughs> Not dollars, but still, still, still way too much. Still kind of a yeah, weird, like. No one's uh, paying a quarter of a million dollars for a diagnosis. Brand new textbook price for a test. <laughs> yeah. I don't under, it's, it's apparently there's one Canadian guy in Nagoya who like, <laughs> um, what's the word? His name's Jimmy Toomey. <laughs> stockpiles the test i don't know i don't know what the deal is like why is he the one guy he's the test czar i, I guess like how is there not just like an english language pdf that anybody can print off and and i don't understand yeah he probably has to run it through his special machine that also tells you how many thetans you have oh god it's a lot i got we got so many thetans oh boy we got thetans out the Sucks. ass yes when are they gonna pick me up off this planet all right Oh, there was another thing uh, that I thought was like out of place was in the waiting room. There's like, it looked like a crocheted, like definitely a needlepoint thing, a square that had yeah. like an alien, like a, like a gray standing in front of a UFO. Oh my, what? <laughs> that said, that was embroidered with, beam me up, Scotty, this planet sucks. <laughs> This was in Which, Japan. Like, this is in Japan. Well, it's it's because the doctor's husband is American. Okay. I think. And I just assume he acquired this somewhere and thought it was <laughs> oh, cute. <no>. But <laughs> it's like, like what? On, on the one hand, first of all, it's very obviously a Star Trek line. It's not said by any gray aliens in the show. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's, it's. I got news for you. Not said by anybody on Star Trek either. What? Yeah, it is. Isn't that, well, a, me isn't that a TOS? Uh, no, not even. What? Nobody ever actually said the exact phrase, beam me up. Okay, Scotty. right. But no, but like, this is some semantic bullshit. This is like when people say, Darth Vader never actually says, Luke, I am your father. No, he doesn't. But that's the gist of what he's saying. Like, it's not a direct quote, but it is what he says. You know what I mean? All right. So also to tell the d brain doctor, <laughs> Alex... <laughs> Very sensitive <laughs> to semantics, period. Yes. No, I told her. I already told her that. I already told her. Will explode even sensitive. in front of loved ones. <laughs> but especially hated ones. Uh, semicolon podcasting recordings included. <laughs> <clears throat> period. Please advise. Oh, Sincerely, uh, right. So, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's not like they don't, they didn't, you no, know, back, I mean, they were progressive, but they weren't hiring grays to work on the Starship Enterprise. You know what I'm saying? Mm, okay. Well, I, 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 I had a second half of that, which is, you know, of course, obviously no one ever also said on that show, this planet sucks. 
<laughs> right. Well, yes, there's also that. But that's that's why like that's why I was surprised to see that in the waiting room of a mental health clinic. Like yeah. that kind of seems like a shitty attitude to have. <laughs> like you're you're supposed to be helping people, I thought was, right. was the deal. And I understand it's it's an expression of frustration and it's it's a it's venting, and sometimes that is healthy, but I don't know. Just to see that unprompted in a waiting room is like that's out of place. <laughs> Also, I don't want to look at a gray in the mental health facility. <laughs> also that, right, because they're they already look, watching me outside. They, oh. Yeah, I'm kind of unsettled in, in, in general by the, the <laughs> those figures. I don't like looking at them all the time. Uh, so yeah, the um, the doctor's uh, husband is the guy who does the pre-screening, and he's, uh, he's a pretty nice guy. I got nothing against the guy, um, except for his choice in crochet. Yeah, and planets. And planets. Uh, but it's... He also, he used to run a local magazine that I used to write for. Uh, I used to oh. contribute articles to his magazine. You knew this, did you? Uh, and then later, I knew this going in, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. And then later, I, you know, paid him tens of thousands of yen a month in advertising when I when I was advertising the bar before right. I knew that that was bad. All right, interesting, interesting. So we kind of had a history which... I didn't know if he remembered, but I remembered. And then I realized, oh, he did remember because when it came time to meet to to meet the doc, he was like, "Should I should I stay outside? Because I'm like, because I like know you." And I'm like, "Yeah, that'd be that'd be good if you could. That'd be great." <laughs> yeah. And he just kind of very nicely, like he, I I I got nothing bad to say about the guy. Really, he's just it was just weird to run into someone that I already knew in this capacity. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I. Basically, the the gist of what the doctor told me after I gave her all my symptoms was like, yeah, you just all of these symptoms are like I, I have been diagnosed with social anxiety. This what's happened is since I quit drinking, that has come back and has now been compounded by general anxiety. And all of these symptoms are just symptoms of general anxiety that are sort of hyper focused and made worse by social anxiety right right and there's like i i was also very clear with them up front like i don't want i want to avoid medication if possible i really don't want to take anything if i can help it because i after quitting drinking and smoking i no longer want to have to rely on a substance to feel normal ever mm -hmm. i mean if i can help it like i'm functional more or less i see you laughing i hear you laughing uh, what, hey what and so I just said, like, do you have a, like, what can I do to not just be anxious? And from for, at that point, that's the point when I realized, like, oh, I don't need to be here. I <laughs> this is outside of um, the doctor's purview. Like, oh, yeah. the because the advice that I got was like, just eat better and exercise. That's like the the most obvious advice that you'd give yeah. to anybody. Yeah. Uh, who's who's not in a great mental state, but also not in the worst mental state. And I'm like, oh yeah, I guess that's just, I guess that's it. It was it was kind of boring in a way. Yeah. Um, but also very, I was also I was very relieved to know that I don't have to deal now with a diagnosis. But at the same time, I was a little bit worried because it meant that like, oh shit, all my behavior is normal. <laughs> oh no, okay, <laughs> right. The way that I see it, the upside of, of getting a diagnosis is you now have resources from people. You know, there's thousands of pages of literature about how to deal with this or how to deal with this in certain personality types. Um, there's not a lot of literature on how to deal with being Alex. Right. So I just kind of have to focus on myself and figure myself out more, which is really the job of therapy which is not what they do this uh, the doctor i went to is strictly just we diagnose you and we recommend meds that's all we do um they did recommend right. a therapist to me but who knows we'll see i don't know i need i i gotta i need to see somebody right right well, how about you it's interesting that you you know you're kind of like what this is normal oh jesus <laughs> it's like yeah I think we kind of talked about that last time on the Crunk Games podcast in regards to me, at least, where it's just like, uh, I, some of what I was going through back when I was younger is just kind of like normal. And we know that because I didn't exactly devolve into some sort of sickening incel type. And so I right. got through it. And so you, you kind of look back on that. And it's like, yeah, I guess 
I guess it is a normal way of working through your mental stuff for a lot of people. And uh, then it was also corroborated in some ways by uh, people on our Discord who listened to that episode and were like, yeah, I've kind of yes, went through the same yeah. thing even recently. And it's just like, yeah, Jesus Christ, it's, <laughs> it's not an uncommon thing. And then you're just like, yeah, fuck, I guess diet and exercise might have helped a bit more. Yeah, when it comes to anxiety, yeah. turns out that's the key to, like, un like, again, unless you are so severe that you are non-functional like then you do need medication yeah but yeah if you're not that then yeah i hate to say it but it's just like it's extremely simple and it's just hey, go for a jog and eat a salad and you'll probably feel better yeah we're gonna record uh, the following episode of the crunkies podcast and uh kind of talk about you know the steps that i took after that and what kind of became of all that but um yeah that's right stay tuned Tanoshimo. <laughs> but there's nothing Tanoshi about the human brain. Well, there is if you study it and you're interested in that stuff. I don't know. You know? They're still kind of gross. Uh, well, I, you're not the doctor. Oh. You're the guy upset about it. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Well, I'm glad you at least uh, went out and did some talking about it and got some, you know, maybe not the answers you were looking for, but something. It's, it kind of was the answer I was okay. looking for because right. like, honestly, what I was looking for was answers and I got them. And so yeah. I'm fine. All I wanted, like the, from the outset, all I wanted was what's my deal. Yeah, and now right. I know. And that deal is just watch yourself. You have social anxiety. And right now you are under general pressure and anxiety and those sort of compound each other. But if you go for a run, then you'll feel better. And I did. I, I went for a run on Saturday and like mentally I felt outstanding. But because it was my first run in like, you know, eight months, my legs were jelly for four days. Well, that's the trade off, I guess. But I mean, yes. do you think that did help out uh, what you said at the beginning of this discussion, which is you just freaking out at loud noises and things like that? It did, but it's like... This, I mean, it, it sucks, man. The human body really is bullshit. It's like <laughs> that, that, I don't know, is that serotonin? But that's like, it is like a drug that loses its effectiveness over time. Like, yeah. I was fine with loud noises for the rest of the day. Ah, uh, yes, yes. And then the next day, it was right back to, <gasps> <laughs> Yes, your Robin Williams impressions. <laughs> Critical hit. Ooh. <laughs> um, I, I startle easily, but uh, I'm, maybe if I exercise consistently over time, I can bring it down to an acceptable baseline, but we're not there yet. Yeah. Like, my legs are still sore. I'm going to try to go out for a run tomorrow and hopefully see if we can start to generate some more permanent uh, results if I, if I do this regularly. Because it's, a, again, like, just to recap, I basically spent my first... 13 years in japan locked in a bottle right i was drunk most of the well not at work i was you know i was you know i knew, I knew not to drink until after work but then after work it was just well we're getting shit-faced until tomorrow's work and i basically <laughs> yeah. basically did that for 13 years and during those 13 years didn't realize i was self-medicating for the social anxiety and the general anxiety hmm. so that when i quit drinking those things just clawed their way to the surface and have manifested in very tangible ways. Yep, yep. And now I need to deal with them, which was the reason for the visit to the dock in the first place. Right. As you've explained before, yeah. Yes. That was basically it, that whole... And that's where we are. I did kind of feel like a jackass when, like, they gave me, they told me their opinions, and then the guy, after I left, was like, hey, thanks for coming in. And I said, thanks. Thanks for being nice. And he said... Yeah, just all you got to do is just make sure you're getting out and exercising and, and stay away from processed foods. And I'm like, can do. Immediately went across the street and ate two Moss Burgers. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have fresh ingredients, don't they? Well, I mean, <laughs> it's what it does say that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it was it was just, I was relieved. I was I was both relieved and stressed. And I like Moss Burger. You got to treat um, yourself. Not their burgers, though. I, 
I don't like their burgers. I, I don't know. Wait, hey, let me back this up. I don't really like Moss Burger. <laughs> 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 what I like is fish burgers and chicken burgers, and they have one of each, so I just got one of each. <laughs> All right. I am hooked now. I am hooked on Komeda's uh, f- fried fish burger, which I am going to eat after we record. I was hooked on their katsu sandwich. I almost said katsu sand because I've been in Japan for 18 years. Um, and the katsu sandwich is good, but it's it's twice the price of the fried fish burger, but only about, I don't know, 30% more. So the better deal is to just get a fish burger. And I'm, all, this, I'm also, and this is part of your mental right. health regime. This is, but yes, I'm, I'm, I've got to take notes about my fish burger intake and submit them to the doctor for evaluation. I meant to say regimen. Why did I say regime? Oh. <laughs> uh, because I'm ruling that comedo with uh, an iron fist. Uh, <laughs> Sandwiches. <laughs> I mean, iron is something that they said I need more of. So, right, I'm gonna start eating my own fist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. The king of Komeda Fish Burger Tournament. <laughs> Hang on. Wait. Te- Teko Gyo San Ken. It's the new DLC. Tech Komeda. <laughs> the king of Iron Fish Tournament. There we go. Yeah, thank you. All right. And there's our episode title. Thank you very Yay, much. We Here's did it. The ding. We did it. Ah. <sighs> Okay. No, sometimes like if I'm starving and I, maybe other people make this mistake, I have only learned this about myself at 40 years old, that if I'm starving, it's still a bad idea to eat a double serving of anything. Yeah. Yeah. Because what I had a habit of like, I would work hard and forget to eat either at the bar or on my day off, like editing podcasts or editing video, I would, I would get in the zone for so long, you know, I would eat breakfast, but then it would be like 2, 3, 4 p.m. And I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot to eat lunch. And I'm famished. And so I'd go to Comedia and I'd order two burgers and then immediately realize, oh, this is too much. Yeah. All um, I needed was the one. I didn't need to get two. And I realized this the other day because, like, uh, I fucked up and I was editing video until 5 p.m. And at 5 p.m., I'm like, time to go out for lunch. (laughs) <laughs> and so I go out to the Komeda and I have a fish sandwich and a, uh, what's it called? Ham toast. I got a thing called ham toast, <laughs> which <laughs> it's, a, you know, he, he, as advertised. Yeah, I can imagine. I finished them and I was immediately just immobilized and I managed to go home. And like, not only was Ready. I too full, uh, uncomfortably full, I didn't have the energy to do anything for the rest of the day. I fucked up the rest yeah. of my day by eating too much. Because your body's full of salt. <laughs> Yeah. And no matter where I go or what I do, I'm like falling asleep. And and then my, my wife gets off work three hours later and I'm still full. And she's like, where do you want to go for dinner? And all I could say is, <laughs> and she's like, what's wrong? I ate late lunch. What do you mean? Like two thirty three five? What the <sighs> fuck? She didn't say that, but you know, more or less. <laughs> Um, so not like just pull string, ugh, pull string. <laughs> So I'm, I've only now just learned at 40 years old, maybe don't gorge yourself just because you're starving. Just you know, eat one serving and be done with it. What? They really had a good thing going when they came up with three meals a day. It's pretty good. Turns out to really work out for a lot of people. It is. I find, that's why I find Taco Bell excessive, trying to introduce a fourth meal. Well, I mean, that was... What are you, hobbits? <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> what? They eat, they eat, you know, second breakfast, et cetera. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Elevensies. Well, they're little freaks. They, they lunch, don't even... super lunch. <laughs> they eat super lunch. <laughs> they have different metabolism. I guess. Dinner. After dinner. Little cockney freaks. Anyway. <laughs> that um... was the working title of uh, Tolkien's class. <laughs> <laughs> little, little cockney freaks. <laughs> hey, get a load of these. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Ugh. Tolkien. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's been Alex's brain. That's been Alex's brain corner. Cool. Thanks for hanging out here. So, yeah, that's part of me trying to embrace a new normal is 
I am I am embracing the close of the bar because it means my social anxiety can fucking take a rest and I can focus on um I hate this term. I uh, being a content creator. I I want to Yeah. I need to make a video for my Patreon just summarizing what I do and I I've settled on I've settled on the term content creator, but this is something I can only get across, you know, in audio. Cuz I I can't you know, if I write it it doesn't work. I feel like you don't have to actively fight against the definition in the sense that you need to make a video explaining what you do. What? No, I'm no, I'm it's a video in the sense that like every YouTube channel and Patreon has a welcome video that says, Hi, I'm Alex, this is what I do. It's not it's not me trying oh, to you like characterize I'm sorry, I guess terms. I misunderstood your characterization, which was you were gonna post it on Patreon. I I thought. I am. Well in just that I meant, so never mind. I just got I got a different idea of what you were doing. Oh no, that's also no, it's my it's my introductory video, like, hi, I'm Alex. I'm a blood okay. type A, probably. A channel trailer is what they're called. Holy shit! Thank you. Uh, can <laughs> tray. Damn it. For sure. I went to the Koban after work a few Saturdays ago because somebody, a German tourist, left their... Um, fa- Do they say fanny pack? I know the Brits laugh at us for saying fanny pack. When Let's just call it what it, what right. it is. Vagina bag. I left it... <laughs> I took this fanny pack... To the Koban. What is a Koban? Someone might not know. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's We're all weebs here. We all know what a Koban is. It's, it's like somebody playing perso- a modern persona, not knowing what Chan and Kuhn mean. Of course you do. All right. Now you're just being belligerent. Just say what Koban is. Um, it's, a, it's just a police box, I guess you'd say. Okay. Yeah. See? The teeny little police station on the corner. It had the guy's passport in it. And I'm like, well, he's probably going to need that to go back to Germania. True. And I just brought it and I... I you know, gave it to the guy, filled out a thing. Uh, and while I was there, I saw that, you know, as they do, they had wanted posters on the Koban. And the wanted poster specifies the person's blood type. <laughs> when we know, like, we know the blood type personality thing is bullshit. Yeah, but... And, but what? <laughs> like... It's, it may be someone who work is like a blood technician who works in a lab might see it right. and is like oh, B type. <laughs> she looks like this that person because like we it's bullshit. We know it's bullshit. Your blood type doesn't determine your personality. It was a nice. fad in the seventies that Japan decided to believe as fact. It's the same as uh, eating KFC for Christmas. It's it's some bullshit someone made up that now everyone believes and yeah, you but- cannot make them stop believing it. How did that even get on the poster, right? I mean, I, I would assume that this culprit left some blood behind and they decided to test it and got, got the blood type from it. Like, is, I mean, is that even a common thing? I mean, you're, it sounds like no. But. To list it on a one? I, I don't know. Um, oh, okay. But I, 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 don't, I see my assumption was just, I mean, people have hospital records in Japan. My assumption is just they found this person's hospital records, looked at yeah. blood type, and it said B. So they wrote yeah, B. Sure. But my my concern is this could lead to false arrest because like, oh, B type. I, that means she acts rash and blah, blah, blah. And so you start like targeting yes. people who act like that when it's based on nothing. Right. Yeah. It's absolute. Yeah. It's garbage science. Stop doing it, especially when it comes to the law. Right. Do you know your blood type, by the way? No. A? No. I think it's A. I don't All know. Right. I asked my mom and she a said probably A. That's why it is that. Yeah. Oh, see here? I just, I was checking this Japanese site and it said type A, likely to steal bicycles. So no wonder. (laughs) Yeah, no wonder the police target you. Uh, Yeah. Type O positive, notorious for dirigible thievery? (laughs) All right. They didn't even make those anymore. (laughs) No, well, they've all been stolen. (laughs) Yeah. You'll never catch me, land dwellers. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't know who this villain I made up is, but I love him. No, that was Bioshock Infinite. <laughs> I've never played it. <laughs> it's oh. airborne. I'll tell you that much. All right. That's it. Oh, the guy got his passport back, by the way. Okay, good. I, I would like... Shout out to Hans. Last time... <laughs> it's not his name. Last time I turned in something to the Koban... They uh, they sent me a thank you letter, and I really I still have it, and I really hope they send me one for this one because I'm applying for permanent residency again next month, and <laughs> it looks really good if you <laughs> if you like submit these things. Yeah, no, that's great. Because um, like they say on the immigration website, like if you have any documents, 
that like bolster your character in any kind of official capacity, please submit them. And I'm like, I guess this, this is good. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you, you mentioned references earlier. That's like getting a reference from the police. Yes. <laughs> He's one of the good ones. Yeah. That's is what it basically <laughs> says. The good ones. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, My Lord. Well. <laughs> oh, yeah. What was funny, though, is when I went to turn in the passport, the guy, like, the guy who accepted it was not a cop. He was just, like, a Koban volunteer who handles stuff like this, just does clerical stuff around the Koban. Yeah. And he's, like, he opens the pack, pulls out the passport, is flipping through it, and then shows it to me and asks me like hey what what country is this passport from <laughs> i'm like germany <laughs> surely it said that i mean it said deutschland on the front and on the inside cover but like it doesn't say deutz i guess is that what's yeah. misleading yeah, like that no that is it okay I, i'll bet you anything yeah I, I, it has to be it because it doesn't have anything that looks like deutz <laughs> I guess you're right. Oh boy. D E U? I don't get it. Deut Sculando? Oh boy. No. I don't even is that even in Europe? Who knows? Anyway, big ups to the Germans. Keeping it tight. Uh, <laughs> mm, ah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have some German listeners. Turns out you don't, in fact, have to hand it to them. <laughs> <laughs> We got some German listeners. We got uh, Pan Smith. We got, um, I don't know if the Dreamcast guy still listens, but uh, he was for a while. <laughs> who is the Dreamcast guy? He was a, he was a, a guy who follows me on Twitch. He's, his handle is Dreamcast something. Oh, all right. Yeah. They love the Dreamcast over there. It's, it's like the Mega Drive in South America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any people do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of games... Should I talk a little bit about a game? Did you play one? Well, I finished Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Doesn't answer my question. So yes, I think no, actually okay. it does. Oh, because you would Shit. infer that I played it. He's got me. This guy's got me. Yeah. How dumb are you, Optimus? I'm Alex. Um. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I do uh. get angry a lot. Optimus. No, I said dumb, not angry. Okay. What? what? I uh, I had a pretty good time playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I, 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 I struggled to really talk about it too much because I know that you are not interested, Alex. And so, if I go not too yet. long, I feel like I'm going to lose you pretty early on. Well, no, my my only concern is, I am I am trying to avoid spoilers and so far i have yeah because i do want to play it someday but i also understand it's not the end of the world if this gets spoiled for me sure well i didn't mean even talking about spoilers because oh good well then we, you know just talk, go go nuts we would preface that anyway not just nuts go koopo nuts no I, okay i mean i guess mm. no are you, are you or are you not koopo for koopo nuts Truthfully, I, I didn't have a whole lot to talk about to begin with, but um, it was generally enjoyable. I, uh, last time we did talk about the fact that, yeah, there's there, you can still have a critical mind about some things uh, in it. And so maybe I'll talk about that a bit. But like, um, I would say, and not to frame this as some sort of defense to try and get you to like it or anything, but I just wanted to say that, yeah, this game is a bit more open world than the last one, of course, oh. because they are matching the rest of disc one, like beat for beat and plot line for plot line. So you are running across this world that they specifically set to make at one to one scale of the humanoid characters. And so it is a real world map, but they don't go full on crazy with just pouring the game goo all over the place with the open world stuff. It's, I mean, people saw that you, uh, you have to activate these towers and they'll show you extra things on the map. And people were kind of like, that just sounds like some Ubisoft crap that you always have to do in Assassin's Creed. And those games were like huge and dumb and everything. And yeah, you do do that. But I wouldn't say that these things on the open world are, are all that high in number to begin with. Everything's pretty well partitioned out because like, 
it's all based on regions, right? So you start out in the grasslands, then you go to Junon, and then Corel, and that includes uh, Costa del Sol, and then Gongaga. And these are all separate regions up until through through the end of the game. And sometimes you can go back to other places, but a lot of the times when you're moving through the story, you are just kept in that region and have to go through the story and finish it up before you can go back to other places. And so it's not like full freedom. You just can't just jump around anywhere all the time. And I wouldn't recommend that anyway, if you're just going through the first playthrough for the story, because what I did was finish the story, then go back to the point where I can go back through the world and also turn on the 60 FPS mode because before I was playing it at the best graphics on in 4k and that wasn't the best frame rate, but now I can sort of uh, leisurely go through and do all the side stuff that I want in, 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 a, in a better frame rate. And it is better <laughs> feeling for me. And I enjoy that. But yeah, the point I was getting at is that everything's partitioned out, not just by region, but like, you get like a set number of side quests in each region, and there's not a lot. You get these odd jobs that they, that they call them that in the towns. The Golden Eye guy? No, no, no. Sorry. No, I forget what movie he's actually from. I just know him from the video game. Uh, Don't pick him. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Unless you want to troll somebody. No, yeah. Uh, but there's only like four to six of those in each region. So not a lot, and they're fairly short. You get these other side quests called the Proto Relic. Uh, quests uh, wherein you are basically hot on the trail of a special character who Final Fantasy fans know, but... Uh, oh, oh, wait. Is it Gilgamesh? <clears throat> yes. Is it really? Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How do I... Okay. God. Fine. Well, like, There's I our guess, one spoiler. <laughs> I guess because Thank he's always... Alex. He's the one character across the entire series who's who's always hunting for weapons, right? Like... <laughs> That's what he does in FF14 as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. So anyway. So in, 12, um, in FF12, he shows up. You, you get the Loto's sword from him. Remember that? <laughs> yes. All right. Anyway, he shows up in a special series of quests in this game. And then there's just like uh, other things to do, but it's not a lot. Because you can go to the tower and the tower will light up some little uh, shrine that you need to visit to get data for Chadley and Brent Spiner. Those... Sorry, please continue. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I <laughs> don't accept your apology. Oh uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but these are little like dots on the map that are not crucial and don't have cutscenes attached to them or anything. And so they're fairly uh, inconsequential. And you can clear out most of them, I would say, within, you know, one, one sitting, one short sitting. And so it's not a huge open world. It just looks like one. And I think that that is more appealing, not just to people who maybe are sick of those type of games, but maybe people who were expecting more of an RPG feel from this Final Fantasy VII remake. And I think you do get a little bit more of that in this one, just by virtue of the fact that Things are a little bit more partitioned out, and it's not just like a free for all the whole time. So I think that was good. It was a good choice on their part. It still feels a lot more vast and adventure like than FF15, which, not to knock on FF15 too much, I think that game uh, walked so this one could run essentially. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's a good experience in terms of just like running around and enjoying the world that many of us are familiar with. Just in a new light, literally. Uh, but also, like you know, after finishing the story and doing a lot of those quests, I felt like the the writing and dialogue was not as strong as remake felt, and maybe that's a consequence of the this game being so much bigger that there's more ground to cover. <laughs> but in terms of like, generally, the writing is still like good, and it still has like a lot of good extra characterization that uh remake sort of established in the sense that like i keep saying this is ff7 the movie and so you do get some of that good uh flavorful dialogue from time to time but man i am so sick of all of the cringe joking and dialogue from certain scenes and certain characters oh, especially no. roche 
I don't know why this guy just keep why they have to have him keep talking in like uh, racing and motorsport metaphors. You know, like even oh, in the first that, game, okay, yeah. like, let's put it to the red line. And he still talks That's, like yeah. that in this fucking game. And I just, I know he's supposed to be an annoying dick that no one likes, including Cloud. Of course, because Cloud doesn't like anybody, but no one likes Roche. He's an annoyance and I get it. He doesn't have to be this big of an annoyance to the fact that I just don't even want to see or hear him because he's not an entertaining character to me. It's cringe shit that I don't like. <laughs> And um, uh, there's plenty more of that sort of, uh, you know, attempts at humor that don't really gel with me. And I get a lot of it in, in this game compared to the first one because there are characters such as Yuffie who also, uh, you know, just don't stop, just are relentless with their annoying traits. And uh, I, I realize part of that is just uh, f- the original intent from, you know, the, the writing. Uh, the people who worked on this game in Japan, of course, but then it gets transposed into the, you know, localization teams and they just seem to make it even more like unbearable than it, it should be. I don't know. Uh, do you, yeah, do you, do you mean, get maybe what I'm yeah. talking about? <laughs> I do. I think sort uh, of cringy dialogue. And I don't mean, I'm obviously not talking about how like, this is like some blight on localization or content or, this is not like a, oh no <laughs> this is not like a sweet baby thing this is not where no, i'm going I, to towards but it's just generally it doesn't gel with my sense of humor right i know i have this same argument uh, in my upcoming youtube video when i talk about chain echoes and sea of stars because they both kind of have the same sort of cringy fourth wall breaking sense of humor that i don't like and i point that out I also describe why I hate it and I don't think it's funny, but I'm also careful up top to say this is not my kind of humor. It might be yours. It is absolutely not mine. Right. And I think in this case, I don't think that you're not that you're saying this, but like I think a lot of people put the blame on localizers, but they they have to work with what they have to work with. (laughs) It's like. You know, and, yeah, and yeah. a lot of times that's just what these characters are meant to be. And they're just doing the best they can with the material that they're given. Oh, yeah. I think at some point, at some point, and, and the nerdiest of nerdy gamers are loath to do this. But at some point, you do have to blame the Japanese writers if a character or game just isn't good. You cannot blame it on localizers every time. Yes. I mean, so there stop is. It. Yeah. I mean, there is no way we we, we can't say that the Japanese staff did not intend for Yuffie to constantly sing her own lyrics to her own theme song <laughs> at times I, yes. in this game. And yeah, Smooth sent me a, a video of that. I thought that was kind of cute, but, but once. Yes, but more than once. <laughs> okay. And she also does the thing Barrett did in remake where you go, da, 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 da. Oh, right. So they're just, okay. the singing is a bit overblown i mean overdone that's been that's been going on since uh 15 hasn't it didn't uh who was your who was your photo twink in 15 <laughs> prompto yeah. yeah 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 he was didn't he 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 would sing the uh the battle victory jingle? i i i suppose yes now it's it's even more of a thing now yeah he made up lyrics to the chocobo theme but it was like off meter it wasn't it didn't match up with the notes of the song, which I always thought was weird. Yeah. Well, guess what? You get to hear you if you do the same thing. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Alex has one vindication. <laughs> uh, not terribly excited. Uh, right, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I am, yeah, I am fully aware that they work with what they got and they deal with that. And like I said, again, they're dealing with, I think a lot more dialogue than they even were in the previous game. So it makes sense. Yes, I just don't, it doesn't work for me all of the time. There are plenty of good little moments, things that I'm not going to spoil, but things I don't hate or anything. This is just one element of that writing and dialogue. I did not like because I think it's just such a, Uh, it's becoming like a more common thing in game dialogue from the East and the West. We're just a lot of, uh, like I said, cringy stuff, even like a dragon infinite wealth had ton, had tons of that as well. Just like every single party chat, I couldn't stand in those games because it's just, 
rattling off puns to each other or just, <laughs> just it got to be too much for how many of those they made it just way too much uh but that's me that's uh little old sour and bitter me i get it though i, I see where you're coming from yeah i've started I, i've come around now i am i now prefer uh dubs to subs uh, because I think the quality of them now is is so high yes. that yeah yeah I want somebody talking to me in my native language like of course I do oh well also on like that my, my note, Japanese is functional enough to understand things but um, yeah I'd, I'd rather have somebody with a unique accent outside of just Japanese or maybe Kansai Ben maybe Tohoku Ben but that's it that we see in games anyway anyway you sorry what are you saying. Hey, Alex, what if it's a Japanese dialect speaking in your native language? What? And if you need poof, I like how the whole thing. Uh, mm. <laughs> I. She's <laughs> real What is this? That is Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, the. Japanese because much of it is set in Hawaii, they decided to have oh no many lines of English dialogue spoken by the Japanese voiceover cast. Oh, because it's Hawaii. <laughs> oh no! Even though, of course, the English dub is all English all the time, and no one would ever attempt to even try to insert uh, Japanese, for example. Uh. But. Uh, Yes. We saw some of this in uh, Persona 5, if you remember. There's um I don't. I never played it. Yeah, okay. Oh, there's a scene in Shido's Palace where Anne has to talk to some asshole who's lounging by the pool and she claims that she's like English royalty. And in the English version, it just plays out exactly like I said. In the Japanese version, she speaks pidgin katakana English for the entire conversation, and it's very awkward. Yeah, right. In fact, I'm gonna drop it right here. It's nice to meet you. My name is Am Winder. Okay. Great. Another great Sega product. <laughs> this is but once. Madame Nela, you see, forbids the use of fire in human conflicts. I Ray? I just wonder if I just wonder if they were told about this before they went into the booth. <laughs> oh yeah, it's very possible it was just sprung on them. Yeah. However, it does have some very famous voice actors in this game, you know, famous anime voice actors, so I, I can't imagine they wouldn't be briefed, but <laughs> goodness gracious, some of this Ooh. wow. Big time. Big time wow. Like just just go all Japanese if the English dub is all English. Yeah. I do wonder, though, it's probably something to do with Japan's general hard-on for Hawaii and, and by extension, America. So. Oh, they also went to Hawaii in Persona 5. <laughs> yes, of course. Because, uh, yeah, Ryuji, Ryuji, like, your party gets off the plane and Ryuji, like, is terrified because his English is bad. And then he gets a cab and he's like, oh, wow, the taxi driver speaks Japanese. This is incredible. Yeah. But also, what also is funny about that game, though, is that Ryuji is always complaining about English tests and English class and studying for English, meanwhile, all the while speaking fluent English. Yeah. Uh, but I get it. It's just funny to me. I, I do just love, you know, that first clip I played of the guy just saying, I got the whole thing. Like, <laughs> Oh, is that what he was saying? Yeah. Wait, play that again. She's the real thief. He's the real thief. I recorded the whole thing. I recorded the whole thing. She's the real... Wait, hang on. She's the real thing. Anthony Toof? I really the whole thing. <laughs> Who's this Anthony Toof? I accidentally the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally Zembu. <laughs> <laughs> I, he he oh, said it wow. like Balky. Like, <laughs> I work on the whole thing. Uh, oh, Ichiban, don't be ridiculous. Yeah. Joy Odori. Oh, All right. Awesome. 
Uh, oh, and by the way, they're talking right. to cops. And <laughs> the cops <laughs> retain their <laughs> white English voice actors. So, of course. Wild. Pretty good. One more for the road. <laughs> should be arresting is the driver. Hang on. He said, hang on. I dropped my ring. <laughs> yeah, there, there it is. He said something about Bomberman? <laughs> is that what I heard? No. Well, first of all, that was Ichiban speaking Japanese. He said, the Bon Voyage dude? Because okay. oh, okay. characters said well, Bon Voyage. Bon Voyage is French, I'm pretty sure. Well, <laughs> <laughs> We're getting way too in the weeds here. We are. The game, in the the game's, game's very twisted with language. Let's just put it that yes. way. Yes. All right. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, Good stuff. Final Fantasy Rebirth, as far as I know, has no such problems. So, <laughs> what are they going to call the third one if we've already got remake and rebirth? Re retread? <laughs> well, they're already doing that. Uh, oh, uh, re. I've heard reclaim. That's a reclaim. word that Sephiroth uses a lot. Oh so Jesus! That could be it. <sighs> That seems like the least offensive one to me. I don't know. Maybe they'll just reuse Reunion. Who knows? But Reunion, Reunion was already done for the Crisis Core remake. So I, Sephiroth is Sephiroth might be the most boring Final Fantasy villain. What does he? What does he do? He's just he hates Cloud and he's angry and he shows up and he talks about a reunion. He doesn't hate Cloud. He needs Cloud. It's not even him though, isn't it? Is like the real Sephiroth died and this is just like the part Genova, part planet goo? I don't know. Well, we don't know that one way or another yet. Okay. There's, there's, all right. <laughs> I can give you the rundown, Ooh. but I mean, that's, that's Wait, something that's not on. exactly talked about. This has probably already been proposed by someone else, but what are the odds, and I think extremely high, that part three involves you playing at least one scene with the original ff7 models well because i think i know that this game is changing and mixing up the story it has to work in reference to the original i think that at, at one point you're either going to flash back or flash sideways or be revealed that this is all in cloud's head or something and you will <laughs> at least for a while play as popeye cloud it has to right because it's relying on the existence of the original for any of this to be meaningful, right? The fact that it's different, it's got to come out at the end and say, like, that's why things are different. Well, I two we'll things. I, I think I'm right. What? To, your, to your overarching point, I think it already relies on us, the audience, playing the original game. It doesn't exactly yet really refer to the past game as the past. You know what I mean? So there's nothing like that yet. But it, no, but it has indirectly. Yes, it has. Because the first one has characters that were supposed to die in the original who don't die, but are then killed by ghosts or whatever because oh, I, the events have to match up with the no, timeline. I, so it's it's telling you indirectly that the original timeline is real and this yeah, has to match. I think we agree there. It's indirect. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. My second point is that uh, you do play as the old character models, but in mini games. Oh, shit. Uh, it's a big uh, thing in the gold saucer, for example. Well, I yeah. take it back then. So. Wait, no, I don't. They could still do it. They, they probably will do it. <laughs> or they'll at least use that uh, trope uh, for something in, in a side story. Um because it's yeah, it's getting harder and harder to uh, surprise audiences these days, especially when it comes to games. Yeah. Well, I surprised you. You didn't know about what I just told you. So. That's true. Yes, you surprised. Here's my surprise face. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm Alex. Pretty good. I, wow. Hey, I like your impression. I am Jackie Chan. That sounded like me being Jackie Chan. Right. Did you know he was friends with Akira Toriyama? Who? The guy we lost a character. Two we are we, Stanley Tucci. Two words. Toriyama. Wait. <laughs> it's Stanley Tuchiyama. That's right. Tuchiyama. 
Yeah, big man's up top now. That's right. My One of my Saturday regulars, Yusuke, has seen him, uh, saw him walking around Kiyosu at least once because uh, Yusuke lives in Kiyosu where Toriyama lived. And has, uh, he, cause our, our, my, my guy Yusuke, I think he manages a supermarket. I think maybe Toriyama even went into the supermarket at one point. Although right. I can't yeah. imagine he does his own shopping, right? He's, he's probably got legions of maids and butlers. <laughs> yes, Alex, of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, sort of related to that, you know, I, a lot of people really got into the habit after he died to really singularly credit him with all of the art that he ever made when that really isn't the case because I think most people, famous right, artists. I, now, it's reasonable. I'm not I saying it's it unreasonable. Because he designed them. Practically speaking, like <sighs> these people have assistants who make a lot of the stuff for them. I know, but like... Again, this is this is going back to your Scotty beam me up bullshit. It's all semantics. Like he still designed the characters. (laughs) No, just let me say it. (laughs) Can I make my point? Yes, I guess. I get it, but oh man, (sighs) I I get it, but I don't like it. No, you clearly don't. (laughs) Just never mind. Anyway, there was uh, okay. Something we can agree is more fucked up is that uh, there was a French newspaper. And I guess they had, you know, their their culture section with front paged with this uh, French, mind you, their huge front page of this uh, culture section or whatever it was was the headline next to a picture of Goku, Dragon Ball Dead, in English, <laughs> in English, f- what the fuck? in a French newspaper, and so oh. yeah, in English that doesn't really sound very nice. <laughs> oh boy! But it was a tribute because you know the French are very much more into manga and anime than 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 many of the Western cultures. But yeah, they put it in oh English. God, Dragon Ball that's Dead, and terrible. I think I <laughs> remember the one thing he made right, but also like <laughs> he did, he did. <laughs> also that no, I I I think they were trying to rhyme Zed. Oh, that okay. That I get. That makes more sense, but it doesn't make enough sense. I, you're absolutely <laughs> yes. I, it makes the most sense we can squeeze out of that. I think. Yeah. Oh, jeez. But yeah, it looks <laughs> just. It looks really crass. It, it looks like a New York Post headline, but it wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed <laughs> to be a respectful tribute. Oh, but man. in giant words, they put Dragon Ball dead. I'm just like, God, could you have, could you have maybe workshopped that a bit? <laughs> oh. <sighs> anyway, yeah. Um, so, of course, I guess uh, most relevant to our discussion topics here on No More Whoppers, this has uh, people once again questioning the future of Dragon Quest. Wow. Now that two of the biggest creative pillars of that series are, are uh, have passed on, well, I bet, but also, yeah, in, for the most in part. fairness, I think those two pillars haven't done much for the series in the past ten years, anyway. Oh, now I can rag on you about like, the semantics. <laughs> well, no, I mean, uh, did Sukiyama even like if he was composing his own music for the last couple of games? it was not good. And if he was having an assistant yeah. do it, it was also not good. No, clearly no assistance. Yeah. <laughs> it was bad enough that there are clearly no assistance. I mean, I, I, I point this out anytime Sugiyama comes up in general, but like the guy was retired before he started working on Dragon <laughs> Quest one. Yes, like yes, yes. he was done. He had a, a long career of composing pop music and film soundtracks and composing symphonies and shit and collecting old cameras and playing Mahjong. He was done. He was doing old man things and then just on a lark yep. was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, do a couple tunes for your game. Yep, yep. Which then turned into a post-career second career. Right. Well, you know. Right. And of course, the tertiary career of war crime denial. Well, that's that's not a is that a paying career? I don't even know. I don't know who he's getting money uh, from. Uh maybe. All right. <laughs> could well be, yeah. I think you could get some don donations from that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, it's alarmingly easy to deny war crimes because you can't 
really go back in time and show everybody. So you, you just have to rely on telling them, we didn't do that. Yeah. Oh, no, you're misremembering. <laughs> yep. Cool. Yeah, so um, the music question may be more of a larger question mark than the illustration character design question because, yeah, like I was trying to say earlier about the assistant thing is that plenty of people can reliably mimic Toriyama's style. And, of course, we have other examples of other famous manga creators passing away and their work carried on by others and uh, having, you know, the art to basically look very much like the original. Yes. So I, um, I want to, it, it bugs me to no end though, when people are like Toriyama only, he only draws two faces. Like, no, he doesn't. It's called having a style. He draws a lot of right. similar characters like every other fucking manga artist. It's fine. Yes. It's just, yeah. It's just, it's a I, show that you've watched for decades. So I guess you yeah. think they all look alike. I don't know what you're trying to say, but he draws a bunch of different people. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. But also his style, his style was very distinct. And so like compared yes. to every other, like what people think of the anime style, like it was still very distinct compared to all that. And so I think people just sort of, you know, they, they do their own mental gymnastics and just sort yeah. of make it all blend together in their own head. But uh, yeah. You know what? You know what's off though. You know. You know what the exception to that is that I don't like. You remember the uh, the anime cutscenes in the tr Chrono Trigger port? <gasps> yes. Like those never quite looked enough like Toriyama stuff. It was no, just looked yeah. a bit off and not quite good enough. Like, couldn't you have done a little bit better for Chrono Trigger? <laughs> yeah. Why don't you just get the Dragon Ball people? <laughs> it was like the one time I was like. <laughs> it was way off. This is not very Toriyama like. Something about the phrase the Dragon Ball people that like <laughs> sounds like it should come as the tagline to a company that they work with. Like <laughs> yes. Blorbo Corp, the Dragon Ball people. Uxamo. <laughs> yes. Uxamo, like, the Dragon Ball people. <laughs> Shenlong yeah, right. Incorporated. Like how they have the Pokemon company. That's right. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Kabushiki guy Shameril. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't mean Silverberg. No. No, no, you mean Pika Blue. Yes. Pika Blue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kids are creative, aren't they? Yes. All right. That's that's that. Let's take a what, quick break. You don't want to talk about Dragon Quest? What, what about Dragon Quest 12? There's no news about Dragon Quest 12. Will it have art? Do <laughs> <laughs> Out of respect for Akira Toriyama, future Dragon Quest games will have no art. I mean, that's like people's reactions about the whole thing. <laughs> Is Dragon oh Quest going to have music? So all the. <laughs> Yes, fuckhead. <laughs> oh, remember when Isaac Newton died and we all floated into space? <laughs> yeah. All right. Good the inventor of gravity dead today. <laughs> well, he discovered it, I guess. And goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, that kind of shit is always fun to me. Uh, I well. what? Oh. Uh, Hang on. I'm angry at a thing I can't even put into words yet. <laughs> Pull string. Ugh. Oh, the fact the fact that uh, Oppenheimer just came out in Japan, like, for months oh, yeah. I had to put up with people who were like, huh, guess why Oppenheimer's not getting released in Japan? Like, it is. It's just like any other movie. It takes time to fucking <laughs> translate and subtitle, you goddamned Neanderthal. <clears throat> yes. It's still a humongous prestige picture. Of course they're releasing it in a giant market, you dick. <laughs> ah, you talking to anyone in particular, Alex? Yo! No, not you. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. No, I just any anytime I'm I'm angry I'm at anytime I'm angry at a nebulous person, it's always it's almost always someone I've just run into at the bar. Yes, of course. <laughs> I just, I'm just astounded at the regularity. Part of why I'm going insane working at the bar is, is because again, the, the social anxiety that's come back, but like the fact that I'm sober now, 
no sober person should have to work in the service industry. It's the fucking worst because you have to talk to people and pretend that they are smart and interesting every goddamn day, and it sucks. People are boring. Full stop. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. That's all I got. That's the drop. Other people are boring, and it sucks talking to them, unless you run into a smart one, in which case it's super fun. And I'm, I'm fortunate to have a lot of cool friends that I can talk to and be myself with. But nine times out of ten, when someone walks through that door, my spirit groans. You, you got to love the people who live in Japan for, uh, let's say, more than one year and just have, like, no cultural understanding or sensitivity or, like, <laughs> basically yeah. any, any, under, any understanding of the new place that they are in. <laughs> They've only just applied uh, the the other place they've been like, in. You're until. not going to make an effort to understand the culture or learn the language or do yeah. anything. You just can't check up and see that, hey, some movies come out much later. In this yes. <laughs> some don't. Many do. It, it also doesn't help that like a lot of conversation is based on just whatever shitty clickbait headline is in the news. And that was one for a few weeks was, Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, Oppenheimer not coming out of Japan. Like it is just shut the fuck up and wait. Yeah. I, I, I deal with an astoundingly, Oh, never mind. <laughs> that's, that's where I am right now. Just, it's not worth it. I'm the bar's shutting anyway. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be able to yeah. relax in time. Let's just chill. All right. Sounds good. Uh, well, we can move on if you'd like to, uh, Phone fun, fan freaks, freak phone. I want to. I want to say when I when I yell about boring people, I just I mean randos who don't make an effort to do anything. I I I've had obviously visits from no mobile listeners who are all very charming, extremely attractive people that are fun to talk to. It's just it's it's the randos that come in because they just walk by the bar or they found it on Google. Hey, you've got a five star review. I'll go here. Could you not? Right. And then I've got to deal with the most mundane conversation. I couldn't make up conversation this mundane. (laughs) And I've tried. (laughs) All right. All right. Let's Let's hear some. Um, Did you see the thing in the news about the balloon boy? (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty good. I talked to my dad and he says they're going to have to let me go. All right. Uh, let's, (laughs) Let's take a break. And come back for our final segment, where I believe we have some correspondence. All right. See you then. We're back. It's no more Whoppers. I'm Alex. This over here is Ray. That's right. You got the order right. Because when his... Alex talks, it's Alex goes first. And then when Ray talks, it's Ray goes first. Look at his new cardigan. Doesn't he look great in it? Thanks. I knitted it myself. It's, it's outstanding. Phones. We've all got them. Why don't you use yours to dial 805-669-8255? Boop, 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 boop. That's right, Alex. That's my impression of a touchstone. That's right, Alex. That's right, Alex. There we go. Boop, 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 <laughs> boop. <laughs> boop. Like that was your only line. And then you go back to just matching the feedback. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> That you can Star Wars will always get me. <laughs> yeah. Just a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> All right. We have one call here from a shoes. Again. 
showed up last time, I remember, if I recall. Let's play it here on No More Whoppers. Hey guys, it's Shoes. Despite how it may sound, I am not actually calling you from the moon. So, the website Gizmodo did a March Madness bracket for the greatest iOS app of all time. I sent the list to Ray via Discord and wondered if any apps on the list stood out to you. Along that same line, what are some apps that you don't think you'll ever delete off your phone because of how useful they are to you? For me, Google Keep for note-taking, iCatcher for podcasts, and Todoist, Todoist for tasks have really stood the test of time. Other apps like Evernote and LastPass made me migrate to better price options due to their increasing subscription fees. All the best. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Shoes. Thank you for skip skipping? Thank you for sticking to the script, by the way. We do appreciate it. <laughs> Boy, did he. Um, yes. Uh, but yes, this uh, I, I got a chance to take a look at this Gizmodo page and... Boy, on the topic on the topic of bullshit clickbait, it's this. <laughs> yes, well, they uh, they're only directed to do that now yeah. because they're I mean, owned by an even shittier media company than they were last time. It's like this. This is a bullshit list to begin with because a, a majority of these apps are just like flashlight calculator. <laughs> Um, Uber, YouTube. It's just things that you use. That are, well, I guess Uber's not on every phone, but the other three are, right? I, I, Pretty the, much. The final bracket was Flashlight versus Google Maps. That's not... I, uh, uh, line. It's also a great misuse of... Oh, line is of, an app. That's so. right. Well, it's, it's really bigger in Japan. Yeah, right, well. It's also like the the headline is one of my favorite uh, misuses of a common word that's been driving me up the wall for I don't know twenty years, and that is the word officially, uh, because our headline is Google Maps is officially the greatest app of all time. Well, if Gizmodo says so, then officially I mean, Gizmodo says so. I guess. Well, is Gizmodo the arbiter of a useful or popular app, or did someone just look at some numbers and say, "Yeah, that's the best one" because people use it the most? Well, what is No More Whoppers' official best Japanese RPG of all time? Um, it's whatever one is on most people's phones. <clears throat> You're right. It's Sayuki Journey West. Anyway, okay. No, I just I, it's it's something that's frustrated me it, linguistically is is the overuse of the word officially as uh, a means of emphasis, but without applying any thought to what it actual means or like. Who's who's the authority that this came from? Who who is the <laughs> arbiter of this decision? What what do you mean officially? I'd like to remind the audience that Alex earlier in this episode gave me a lot of shit for semantics. And, and I'll do it again. Uh, he is he's already done it twice by himself. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> in this episode, um, I, uh, I mean, we could get it certified. <sighs> Not we we, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we we, uh, but uh, we can. Uh, we as the site could get it certified. Like, you know, okay, so if No More Whoppers wanted to say officially, this is the top uh, uh, fruity fruit drink to have at a bar, and we could get that certified. We go, you know, I, I assume, get it to a notary public, uh, put our thumb on a little ink pad, and get it signed off that way. I think that's how that works. I think you just need to get a notary, really, to to certify it that way. That I do know a okay. guy. Yeah, okay. You know a guy okay. with an ink pad? <laughs> yeah, in Japan, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, I. It's just, it's the use of the word officially that sets me off. Like, like if a character says... Yeah, I know. Oh, like, <laughs> like, if a character says, now I'm officially pissed, like, oh, okay, okay, so now you've, like, you've done the paperwork now, so you can put this on your resume, I guess, that you are, you are... Oh, someone should say that in the next FF7. I'm officially pissed. Yeah. All right. That sounds like a Yuffie line. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm never so pissed. <laughs> what is that from? Because <laughs> I <laughs> saw Simpsons, that on your. I believe the. Oh right. Okay. Because I saw that on your description of FF16 on the Discord, and I was like, "What? I know I've seen that before." <laughs> yeah. Well, also everybody in that game's British, so. Right. Yeah, that's right. They all say crisps. <laughs> Chocobo crisps. 
<laughs> Deli- delicious. <laughs> uh, making myself play up. So yeah, shoes. In answer to your question, this is a garbage clickbait article, and we don't care about it. Thanks for your call. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean that's maybe that's a little harsh, but you know what I'm trying to say. It's it's nothing. <laughs> Also, the phone call sounded like a Gizmodo article. (laughs) This may as well be a link to (laughs) nothing.com. Hi, guys. Love the show. What do you think about ZomboCom? If you'd like to rank your greatest app of all time, give us a call at 805-669-8255. Yeah, you know what? I think that's a better question. That's our action item. What's your favorite app? What's your favorite app? Call in. Now or ever. Now or ever, tell us why. I mean, so many of them have ruined our lives, but if we really think about it, we must have a favorite. Right? I mm, Do I? Uh, I'm going to include games, so you can say games, too. Oh, well, uh, Blast Rush, certainly. It doesn't have to be some productivity. Oh. <laughs> okay. I was going to say Collection of Saga, Final Fantasy oh. Legend. Because <laughs> I still need to play all the Final Fantasy Legend games. Do you? And when they're on my phone, I feel cozy. All right. That's my cozy gaming. Excruciating, <laughs> inexplicable, old 8-bit RPG. <laughs> no. Yes. I did buy the uh, collection of mana on the Switch, and I remember playing it as a kid, but for some reason, I just I don't know how to approach the original Seiken Densetsu. Oh, really? That's like... The only one I played. I couldn't figure... What? You never played Secret of Mana? No. (laughs) Wow. You're like the guy who's only played Mother One. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I loved FF Adventure, though. That's one of my favorite Game Boy games. Yeah. I I can't figure out how to progress. I just keep walking around and getting killed. It is uh, very stupid. Yeah, you can get stuck incredibly easily. Yeah. Um, I did play through Secret of Mana, though, in that collection and only had the game Freeze once. How about that? Which, for Secret of Mana, Very... is about normal. Yeah. I usually I usually get about one Freeze per playthrough. And I've had this happen on Super Famicom, Super NES, Emulator, Switch. Very interesting how that collection never made it uh, past the Switch. It's Switch exclusive. Oh, I would have thought it had been on PC by now, but I guess Square Enix decided to instead just stick with the uh, the remakes of Secret yeah. and Trials. And stuff. I think I think I picked it up because a it was on sale, but b mostly because I had picked up Trials of Mana, uh, the 3D remake on Steam when that was on sale, and I liked it okay. But the whole time I was playing it, I was thinking like, I bet this is a lot more fun if it looks and plays like Secret of Mana. <laughs> so I picked yeah. up. The collection of mana and yes there's i've been saying this for years but there's something about translating a 2d game into 3d or not even translating just having a 3d game there's so much space to cover so much time is wasted just walking around when i could be doing combat or you know other substantial things yeah. instead of just trying to navigate an environment and then you know well, the, the logical conclusion of that is open world which is like that's it's too much of everything i hate well, you know, with the first game, <clears throat> there is two different remakes you could play. <laughs> what? I thought there was there just was, the one. There's Sword of Mana for GBA. Oh, is that a remake? I have that. That's awful. Uh, it's supposed to be a remake, as far as I know. Yeah, I thought it was. And then um, yeah, there's right. a, mobile, a mobile version that is closer, in essence, to the remake of Secret of Mana. So. Oh. Yeah. But it's also, much like the collection is exclusive to Switch, this one is exclusive to mobile. I don't think it was ported to anything else. Maybe Vita. Oh. Maybe okay. it was on Vita. But, uh, yeah. Weird, weird little progression of the Mana series stuff there. I, I don't understand why they just wouldn't put a lot of that on PC by now. <clears throat> and hey, as long as I was complaining about uh, writing in Square Enix games and localization a little bit i must say the fact that they released collection of mana a very perfectly fitting title for that sort of collection then moved on to make collection of saga which makes no sense in the in the framework of the saga games it's just that it sounds close enough to 
collection of mana. Oh, that, uh, they paired them together in such a way. Yeah, uh, seems a little uh, like reaching, reaching for, <laughs> reaching for five o'clock and <laughs> clocking out. I got into uh, a very fierce argument with a regular years ago about the Grandia collection because he uh, was he was the HD yeah the new one yeah he was angry that you can't call something a collection if it's only two games. <laughs> <laughs> and my counter to that was, yeah, but it's the only two good ones. <laughs> oh my god! So, like, yeah. if I were going to buy a Grandy collection, these are the only two I'd really want in there. So I don't know where, where do you fall the on best this? Kind of like, I, well, that is also the best kind of response to disarm that sort of person. Yeah, because you know, you and I would probably just say no, because collection means more than one. <laughs> yes. So it's fine, and shut up. But it's also good to say, yeah, those are also because those are the only two good ones. So. Yeah, I, I didn't even stop to think about that. But yeah, collection doesn't mean everything. Like if, if somebody yeah. says they have a comic book collection, it doesn't mean they own every comic book in existence. It means I've collected one other comic book. <laughs> yeah, it's a collection, not the yeah. collection. They caught a shark, not the shark. Yeah. Well, this is just our semantic special here on the show, huh? Should we it is. mark this as an as an S episode? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Should we stick with two forty five? Uh, uh, it's a, a double S, triple S, even. Oh, okay. Yeah. S- sizzling. Yeah, snake snake style. Sizzling semantics here on No More Whoppers. Well. Yeah, that's uh, see, like that's another thing I wanted to ask the brain doctor about because, like, it can't be normal that I am so hyper focused on semantics and meaning and making sure that people <laughs> use words correct. Like that, can't, that's not normal, right? That can't also be related to anxiety, right? That's just I just need to calm the fuck down, and I don't know how. Yeah, man, I uh, calming would be good. Yeah, what can I say? At this point anymore. <laughs> I just wish you'd chill out. I'm working on it. Just the, let me use the steam room more than once a week then. <laughs> You're always in there. Uh, hey, these you aren't have cheap. Just, shut up. You've destroyed five laptops this month. Because <laughs> you bring them in there. Uh, I got to check Blue Sky. <laughs> in the steam room. <laughs> update status steaming <laughs> <laughs> but I write it with like eight S's like I'm a mask <laughs> you can take a selfie of you blowing steam yeah. out your mouth to make it look like smoke yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with my face painted green <laughs> it's just running all down your body <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you're you're wearing that yellow hat but it's like falling down around your face why is the floor of the sauna all green <laughs> smoking Dis- <laughs> god. oh god oh cuban pete has logged on <laughs> <laughs> get us out of here oh uh, let's go let's go oh man all right uh don't forget to go to our website no more whoppers.com there you can find links to our patreon which is what helps keep this show afloat links to the discord where guess what if you're on the patreon you get special name colors that's all it does but it looks pretty sharp wait step back i uh in our collaborative document i forgot to also explain what our patreon has and what you get (gasps) what does it have well you can go to our patreon and give us a dollar a month just to be cool supporters or you get five dollars a month to a get this show a week early and b get access to our special patreon only shows which include uh golden 16 seconds and our new currently running a game site about nothing the crunk games podcast where it got heavy and it'll get a little bit heavy after this in episode uh what's supposed to be nine i forget but uh yeah it's, it's fun yes it, it is a little bit heavy but that's kind of, that's the fun of it don't you worry about it mommy and daddy still love you and each other yes that is really the important thing that's <laughs> all you need to remember 
uh, God, I, I almost some shit, but not anymore. Oh, yes. I almost burst into tears playing Persona 3 Remake when you do the social link with the little girl and she's like, she says mommy and daddy are getting a divorce and one of the dialogue options is maybe it's your fault. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so mean. Why is it so mean? Uh, beautiful game, that Persona 3. Uh, now on shelves. Yeah. Uh, but yes, that's it's Patreon. I just wanted to fit that in there. But Alex, keep going. <gasps> Do you like merch? Go to shop.spreadshirt.com slash no more whoppers for merch, which I believe is short for merchandise. Pick up a shirt, put it on your body, go to the store, turn some heads. Right? Oh, yeah. I, I, maybe not in a, a pleasant way, because some of them will be horrified. Um, by looking at the weird man on their shirt with holding a banana. But still, if you want attention, that's the way to get it. If you want to call us, pick up the phone. We're all alone. Dial 805-NMW-TALK, a.k.a. 805-669-8255. Call us. We need to know what your favorite app is right now. It is very important. And give us a reason. Uh, keep it under 60 seconds or you will be excommunicated from whatever church you're in. Uh, we are on oh. the... What? You making calls? You're going to make yes. calls to the Vatican? Yes. I have a Rolodex of holy men. It's called the Holodex. Um, we are... <laughs> Look, I'm... Italian? Let me restate that. That's Alex talking to the Pope. I'm very hungry and it's past lunchtime. Yeah. I, do, I, hang, I hang out with Il Papa from time to time. I'm very sleepy, and I need to get up at 6.30. Find us on the internet. I am at patui.org, which is also my blue sky. That's all you need to know. It's got patui.org has links to all my stuff. Uh, new YouTube video up this or next month. It'll be up uh, on the Patreon this month for subscribers. Next month for the, the Publos, the public right. people. Yeah. Uh, where can people find Ray? Well, my website is rdbaaa.space. And also, like Alex, my blue sky handle as well. So, Well, I think that's the tops. Go to one of those places to find links to the other and find out whatever else I'm doing after that. Um, and then uh, some plugs. I guess I was on Retronauts uh, recently. It's not out yet, I think. But in terms of when this might be published, it might be up. I was talking about uh, Red October, those games, based on the movie. Oh! In book. Just for a just for a little little jaunt through that uh, fun little franchise. Cool. We had the Game Boy game. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> I can't imagine why either. But uh, if I may spoil it, I gotta say I, the Game Boy one is probably the lesser of the five evils. So. Oh God. I, I kind of liked it the best. So. When's that franchise coming back? <laughs> yeah, we'll just dig up Sean Connery and get Alec oh, right. Baldwin out of jail, and we'll be fine. Oh no! And Sam Neill, Sam Neill's alive, right? Yeah, he. I feel like the the day after Jurassic Park came out, he turned eighty. Oh, because ev no. every like every time I see him, he looks of advanced age. But I feel like he's been that way for the past twenty years. That'll do it to you. Yes. Dinosaurs, and, that is. Age and dinosaurs come for us all. If you're trying to escape dinosaurs, it does you only have the instinct yeah, to eat and kill. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it's why, like, like Obama went into the White House with like a black head, black head of hair, came out with it totally gray. Exactly. Because he's constantly running from dinosaurs. And the only thing more scarier, that's right, that's the grammar, than Isla Nublar is the Senate. You folks have been terrific. Thanks for hanging out. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Alex, for being a good sport. Anytime. Everybody else, keep your nose clean. We'll see you next time. Gold subscribers, stick around till after the show. Disc two of Command and Conquer Red Alert Retaliation. Will it blend? Okay. Fucking hell! <laughs> What's happening? I, uh, uh, you want to see it? Yes! <laughs> <laughs>